Hello, how are you? My name is Alice from First National Bank. Pleased to meet you. I'd like to talk to Miss Natalie Harper about a few things. Is this the right number? Yes, but... First National Bank? Alice, are you a banker? Yes, I am. Do you have a moment? Wait, wait a minute. How does a banker know my number? I use First National Bank, but I never gave my mobile number to the banker. You must be scamming me or something. I won't be tricked. Calm down, Miss Harper. Nowadays, if you look it up, you can figure it out. You can figure it out if you look it up. No matter how much of a banker you are, how is it possible to look up a bank user's mobile number? The times are evolving rapidly, you know. You know, there are things like the abolition of bank books and digitalization, right? So it is possible to send banking messages to a mobile phone number. Do you do that without permission? I'm still not convinced. I don't care if it's a phone call to a cell phone, but to send a message to a private number? It's suspicious. Well, I understand why you would say that, but I don't think this is the time to say that. What do you mean? I sent you a text message today for no other reason than to... I came to warn you, you know. If you say I'm suspicious and treat me badly, you'll be in big trouble later on. Warn me? What are you talking about? I just use First National Bank like normal. Is that normal? Is it normal to borrow money and not pay it back? What? You mean a debt? I didn't borrow any money from First National Bank. And you can't believe I haven't returned it. Please don't say things that don't make sense. Please calm down. It's not you who owes money. It's your husband. What? My husband owes you money? Isn't that a mistake? Unfortunately, it's not a mistake. I mean, this is a fact. We are having a hard time getting the money back, and we are in a lot of trouble. If we don't do something, we will be forced to collect the money, so I give him a warning before that happens. Wait a minute. My husband is not the kind of person who would go into debt. Besides, there is no way in the world he would borrow money from First National Bank without telling me, no matter what I think. Even if he did borrow money, it is absolutely unthinkable that he has not repaid it. I understand why you would like to think so, but, Miss Harper, please accept the reality. You are your husband's co-signer, right? Huh? No, that's also not true. I've never signed any co-signer's papers, and neither my husband nor I are in any financial trouble. Are you sure about that? Even if you're not in trouble at home, how about your husband's company? Huh? My husband's company? Besides, let me tell you something, by the way. Miss Harper, your husband is cheating on you. Oh? What? What are you saying? My husband can't cheat on me. He's not that sneaky. I mean, how can you, a banker, know such a thing? I understand why you don't want to believe me, but I saw it with my own eyes. Your husband was with a young woman when he came to borrow money. That seems like he was cheating, doesn't it? I'd like to ask you something. What is it? I can understand that he had me as a co-signer and that you looked up my contact information and messaged me on my cell phone. Why didn't you think the woman who came with my husband was me? What? Normally, if a man and a woman came to borrow money together, wouldn't you think that the woman was the wife and the same person who co-signed? And yet, you knew from the very beginning that that woman was not me. How so? You don't know what I look like, do you? Uh, no, that's the thing, you see. I called her by a different name. What did you call her? Uh, what was it? But anyway, I didn't call her Natalie Harper. Anyway, I'm telling you it was an affair. Your husband is leaving you, that's the truth. You're only worthless as a cosigner. And, you understand, as cosigner, you need to repay the debt. Alice, have you forgotten your position? Oh, my apologies. I'm sorry, I just got distracted. Anyway, I'll leave you alone for today. The amount of the debt is $200,000, so please prepare it. It's been a while, Miss Harper. Regarding your husband's debt from the other day, when can I expect payment? 
Hello, Alice. I'm sorry, but I'm still not convinced, and I can't pay it all in one payment. It's fraud, isn't it? What are you talking about now? If you don't do anything, your husband will be drowning in debt, and your family will all hit rock bottom. If you want to risk not paying it, go ahead and do it. Scary people from the collection agency will come to your house later. I asked my husband if he had ever been in debt before, but he didn't show any sign of it. Of course he didn't. He co-signed the loan without telling you. He must be trying very hard to hide it. But I contacted you for your sake, right? I felt sorry for you to be made a co-signer without knowing anything about it and to be in debt hell. If you can think of it as women helping women. I see. Thank you very much. Well, it's true that it's not good to be asked to pay back $200,000 all of a sudden, is it? I don't want to force you to do that. For now, may I ask you to pay the money in installments? Excuse me, Alice. Yes? Can I ask you something? Yes, yes, okay, but what is it? Is it something to do with the debt? No, actually, it has nothing to do with this debt. There's a rumor going around right now at my son's kindergarten. Rumors? About what? A rumor that my husband owes a lot of money. And on top of that, that our family is running away from that debt, and that we haven't even paid the daycare fees for our son's kindergarten. Wow, I didn't know there were rumors like that. But it's not a rumor, it's a fact, right? It's not true. We are paying our kindergarten fees and we are not running away from our debts. My son is feeling sad at the kindergarten because of the rumors. My son is being looked at strangely by his friend's mothers and it's very difficult for him. I don't know why you're saying it's hard. If you insist that, then you should pay me. If not, I'm sure you'll get a lot of bad comments from your mummy friends. Since you are enrolled in Greenwood Kindergarten, which is famous for its safety, you might as well keep your reputation intact, don't you think? How did you know? What? What? The kindergarten my son goes to. I never said anything about Greenwood Kindergarten, did I? Mmm, it's just a coincidence. Or rather, your husband mentioned something like that. It was just something I remembered. We ask about your family's occupation in the debt process. When I asked him about his son, he told me. Oh, I see. I can't believe he brought his affair partner to the bank when he borrowed money and told you about our son's kindergarten right then and there. If that's true, then my husband is a huge asshole, isn't he? Haha, <laughs> yes. And anyway, I hope you don't mind paying in installments. I will contact you again. Hello, Alice. May I have a moment to talk with you now? Well, 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 Miss Harper. Have you thought about the payment? About that? You didn't tell me where to transfer the money yet. Ah, the thing about that is, I'll come and pick it up in person. What? You're going to come all the way to my place? I mean, why would you do that? It's a lot of money, so it's better to send it by bank transfer, right? No. You see, bank transfer fees are very expensive nowadays. I would feel bad to ask you to go to the trouble of transferring the money. And since you are a cosigner, I'll do this as a special service. I see. You mean you know where we are, right? Oh, no. No, I don't. I did see your address, but I don't know the details. So, um, there is a kindergarten nearby, right? Is it okay if I meet you there? Okay. Please wait a few days so I can prepare the money. I'll wait a few days. But still, you got married to a CEO. I'm surprised that you got married to the boss of a big company, but he borrowed money behind your back and made you a cosigner. My husband is a lawyer. What? A lawyer? That's strange. Normally, when you borrow money from a bank, there is a section to write down your occupation. Don't tell me you didn't look at the documents properly. I didn't think a banker would make a mistake. Oh, no, I did look but he mentioned that his income was very high, so I just assumed that he was the president of a company or something. A lot of income? Did my husband say so? Well, yes, he did. Well, then why did he come to you to borrow money? That's because... You seem to have mistakenly thought that he was the president of a company and that he must have borrowed the money to keep the company going? 
Well, I'm sorry, I don't remember much about that. You don't remember much? You loaned us $200,000 and you've been contacting me so much, but you don't remember much about us? I don't know how that's possible. How can someone who is supposed to be a loan officer at First National Bank be so careless? What are you trying to say? I'm telling you, you're being cheated on. You're saying I'm tricking you, but you're the one being cheated on. You're a woman who's been abandoned by her husband. So what? Huh? If my husband is really cheating on me, I would immediately hire a professional to gather all the evidence I can find, present that evidence, demand alimony, and get a divorce. I'll dump that kind of man myself. Well? Oh, it might be better to do that, right? Then the cosigner thing will be clear, and I can hire a better lawyer than my husband. Wait, wait a minute. What is it? Well, are you going to make it that important? Important? What are you talking about? If you are saying that my husband borrowed $200,000 from the bank, that is even more important. I need to report this to my husband's parents and have them look into things. Not only did he borrow money without telling me, but he co-signed the loan with my name. It's totally unacceptable. No, 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 um, Miss Harper, please calm down. I won't make it public as long as you pay it installments and I have no intention of collecting it in any strange way. That's not what this is about. Anyway, I will ask my husband, who is a lawyer, about it, okay? Are you going to join our talk, Alice? No, no, I'm fine. I'm sorry, but I need to go now. Hello, Miss Harper. I'm sorry about the other day. I was busy. No, 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 it's fine. How can I help you today? Well, about the payment. May I go pick up $10,000 for now? Well, yes, that's fine. Really? Then I'll head over there right away. Please meet me in front of the kindergarten I told you about. But first, may I have a word? What is it? Do you remember that kindergarten I told you about? There was a bad rumor going around my son's kindergarten. Ah, you mentioned something about that. Yes, I remember. About that, I found out who started the rumor. What? I told the rumor mongers what had happened, and I traced back who had told them about the rumor. And then, we finally found him. Mr. Carroll, it's you, isn't it? What are you talking about? I didn't do anything like that. Besides, I'm Alice. I don't know whoever that person is. In school, the story of Alice is written by another Mr. Carroll. You thought of it well. But if you went through the trouble, wouldn't it have been better to change the name completely? Why did you use such a half-assed pseudonym? That's why it was so easy to find out. What are you saying? I told you, I don't know. Anyway, the $200,000 your husband owes from our bank, I'll have you pay it as a cosigner. I'll talk to the chairman. Huh? Chairman? For what? Huh? You didn't know? My grandfather is the chairman of First National Bank. I'm sure everyone who works for First National Bank knows his name at least. It's strange that you didn't know that. Normally, if the grandson-in-law of the chairman came to borrow $200,000, it would be more memorable. No, no, I know. I just forgot about it. Speaking of strange, my husband is also strange. My husband borrowed $200,000 from First National Bank without telling me, whose grandfather is the chairman of First National Bank, especially if he co-signed the loan with me. Don't you feel that he didn't think too much about what would happen if he was found out? Ha <laughs> ha. Well. But it can't be helped. You didn't know anything about it. Of course you don't know, because you being a banker is a big lie. Ha <laughs> ha. What? How did you know that? I asked my grandfather to look it up. Then I found out that there was no banker named Alice at any of the branches around here in the first place. So you contacted me from the very beginning to cheat me out of my money. Alice? You did that? No, Miss Natalie. There's a reason for this. Yes, I know. You're in trouble because you can't pay the alimony for your affair, right? 
What? Why do you say that? Just as you are spreading rumors about me, so too they are spreading rumors about you. That's where I heard it. That the family is on the verge of collapse because of your affair. You can't pay the alimony and you are about to be evicted from your house. That's why you came up with this plan, isn't it? Well, it's just... There's no other way. I... I couldn't live without money. But that doesn't mean there are things you can't do. I don't have a choice. Your husband earns a lot of money, so he should share a little. Please, $50,000 is fine. You don't need the money anyway. Lend me the money. I don't want to. Why not? So I can't make a living and you can just let me die? You're going to leave me to die? You bitch. Don't worry about that. You'll have food, clothing, and shelter. What? What do you mean? My brother is a police officer. What? So I told my brother about all this. Huh? Now my brother is going to pick you up at your house with his colleagues, so please wait a little longer. You'll have a pleasant life in prison with three guaranteed meals a day. What? Prison? Why am I going to jail? Wait a minute. What do you mean? Why are the police here? What are you talking about? What you did is fraud. And defamation by spreading false rumors without permission. You are under arrest for those crimes. Oh no, that's a lie. Stop it. Please, forgive me. This is what you deserve. Please go to your new home, prison. Goodbye. A short time later, Mr. Carroll was arrested for defamation and fraud by my brother and others. This led to a formal divorce from his wife, and he still owes her alimony and child support for their children. When he gets out of prison, he will be forced to work at a factory owned by a friend of his parents. At the factory, he will live in a dormitory and will be provided with meals, so it is good that he will be able to live well. Screw you, bitch! How dare you send me a wedding invitation? Don't you dare make fun of me. Whoa! Why are you so angry? I just kept my promise to you from when we were little. What promise? When we grow up, we'll invite each other to our weddings. We made that promise when we were little. Don't you remember? I don't care about that anymore. You stole my fiancé and now you're marrying him. And you're inviting me because we promised? You've got to be kidding me. I'm not kidding. I'm serious. It's your childhood friend's wedding. You should be there. Don't start trouble just because I stole Eric. What did you say? Don't you ever think about what you did? Don't you feel anything for hurting your childhood friend? Of course I feel a little bad. But it was your fault for trying to marry him. Huh? It's not fair that you're the only one marrying a doctor. If you really married him, what would happen to me? As a childhood friend, I would have to marry a man who's more than that. Then it would be easy to take him away from you. I don't get it. What a stupid reason. You have no business competing for the man I'm married to. What are you talking about? We've known each other since we were kids. People will always compare us. I didn't want to lose to you. I decided since I was little that I would marry a better man than you. Ever since you were a little girl? Now that this dream is finally coming true, you should definitely come to the ceremony. My parents are expecting you to give a speech. I'm sorry for your parents, but I'm not going to the wedding. I don't want you to be in my life anymore. I ripped up the invitation and threw it away. That's terrible. I made cute invitations. If you're going to do that, I'm done with you. I wanted you to catch the bouquet. I don't care if you can't get married. Hey, are you over me yet? How are you? What? Of course you are good, because you finally got married. 
I heard a rumor that you finally settled for some poor guy. What do you mean? It's none of your business. Come on. I was just trying to congratulate you. Don't be so grumpy. I don't need congratulations from a cheating ex. So don't be so cold about it. No one would celebrate the marriage of a couple of losers, right? But I'm going out of my way to congratulate you. You should accept my well wishes. What? A couple of losers? I heard you guys didn't even have a wedding ceremony. Every couple should have a wedding ceremony when they get married, but you didn't. You must have married a man who has no money. It's up to the couple to decide whether or not to have a ceremony. Besides, there are more and more couples who don't do it nowadays. I talked it over with him and we decided not to do it. In your case, it's not we won't, it's we can't. Your husband is not a doctor like me, or even a regular office worker. I heard he works part-time at a gas station. Seriously? Did you look it up? Yeah, he's my ex-girlfriend's husband. I have to check out what kind of man she married. What? But I never thought you would marry someone with no real career. My ex fiance what a shitty married life you have. You're the one living in a shitty marriage, aren't you? You're still with the woman you cheated with. Tell me what you want to say, loser. I'm glad I switched from you to Nicole. An idiot who marries a part-time worker is not suitable to be my wife. Well then, good luck with your life, you loser. What do you think? Isn't this condo amazing? The view is great. It's spacious and gorgeous. I'm so lucky to live in a place like this. Come on, guys. Leave me alone. You know, I heard from Eric that you are living a miserable life. So I wanted to share a little happiness with you. Aren't you glad I sent you a picture of my beautiful condo? What? The ceilings are high and it's a really nice open space. Even from the pictures, you can tell how amazing this condo is. I'm so glad I married Eric to be able to move into a place like this. You mean you two are going to live in this condo? Yes, we are. He got me this beautiful condo. We've been married for five years now, so he got me a nicer place that I like. Surprisingly, you're enjoying your married life. I'm surprised you're still together because I thought you'd break up soon anyway. When you have money, you have a room in your mind so you don't fight. That's why Eric and I are always in a good relationship and we've never had a fight. Oh, but then you and your husband fight a lot every day, don't you? It's hard having a husband who works at a gas station. That's not true. I enjoy every day with my husband. He's a very generous man and we don't fight either. Come on, Katie. You don't have to be so tough. You must be so frustrated. Huh? If you had married Eric, you might have been able to live in this condo, right? I don't know what kind of house you live in with a gas station worker. I'm sure it's less than this condo. I doubt it. We might be better off than you think. That can't be true. How can a poor couple be better off than us? Poor couple? Come on. You can't even make ends meet. Ah, I just thought of a great idea. Katie, you should visit us when we move. Why would I do that? We are not friends anymore. Don't be so rude. Come visit us. You are finally married. You should forget about the past. Let's be friends like before. Huh? So as a step towards that, let's start with the house party. I'm inviting you to this nice condo. Let's have a party. If you want, I'll invite my friends too. They live in the same world as me, but they are very nice people. I'm sure they'll be nice to you, even if you're poor. I'll pass. Enjoy your party with your very nice friends. Are you sure you are giving up this great chance? A poor woman like you will never be able to get into this place. I'm inviting you in, so be happy about it. What great chance? Nicole, who do you think you are? 
I think I'm the wife of a winner, so you losers stop talking and do as I say. This is your first and final chance to get into a luxury condo. You poor people should come to the house party. That's my husband's condo. What? So it won't be the last time I get to be in your condo. I go in and out every day, so I guess I am not going to the party. I don't give a shit about your new place. Are you stupid? Stop joking. Are you trying to tell me that a part-time gas station worker owns this place? Don't be so unreasonable just because you're miserable. I'm not even joking. I'm telling you the truth. My husband owns the building. He manages real estate while working part-time at the gas station. Huh? Working part-time at a gas station while managing real estate? Hmm, but I think it's more like working part-time at a gas station while managing real estate. My husband says the part-time job is just a side job. Wait a minute. What do you mean? Are you kidding me? Your husband is the owner of this condo? Actually, he doesn't just own that building. He also owns several condos, apartments, and parking lots. Really? That's amazing! And he is also working at a gas station? Who the hell is he? Don't tell me his family is super rich. No, my husband's family is very ordinary. And he's just an average person. He's just a little luckier than other people. He won the lottery twice. He won twice? That's when he started investing in real estate. And from there, he gradually increased his assets until now. But he says he's just an ordinary person who happens to be lucky. He works part-time at a gas station to keep a sense of a normal life. No way! That's why he works there? Isn't it funny that he is so serious? We actually met at a gas station. Six months after we started dating, he told me he was running a real estate business. I was really surprised at that time. Oh no, that can't be true. Your husband manages real estate and he owns this condo? He's a true winner. Well then, I'm not interested in the house party, so I will pass. Mind your manners for the neighbors and have fun. Is it true? Your husband owns a condo? Our new condo belongs to your husband who works part time? Yes, it is. We live here on the top floor. Welcome to our condo. Maybe we'll see each other in the lobby or something. Oh no, no way. The top floor? How come the girl I dumped lives in a nicer place than me? It's because you dumped me. Thanks to the fact that I didn't have to marry you, I met a very nice man. He's very kind, gentle, financially stable. I am so happy to be married to my husband. Damn it! I can't believe I have to listen to my ex-girlfriend bragging. If you don't want to hear it, don't ever contact me again. I'm not asking you to leave, but I want as little to do with you as possible. Please don't contact me anymore. I will block your number. Wait a minute. I just want to ask you one question first. What do you want to ask me? Well, let me get this straight first. I mean, your husband has a lot of money, right? He owns real estate and can afford living on the top floor. He must have millions of dollars in assets by now, right? Why are you asking me this? Please, Katie. Please lend me some money. Seriously? Well, this is just between you and me, but I am financially struggling a little bit. When I moved here, I got carried away and bought all the new furniture and appliances. Next thing I know, I've spent more than $50,000. Don't tell me that's why you're asking me to replace the money you owe. That's right. I borrowed some money from work. I want to pay it back as soon as possible. Wait a minute. You said you borrowed money from your work, but you work at a hospital, right? How can a hospital lend $50,000 to its employees so easily? Well, that's... You definitely didn't borrow that money, did you? It's money you stole from work. How did you know? What an idiot! You shouldn't have done that, and you need to make it right. I know, I know. But I don't have $50,000 on me right now. I put all of my savings into a down payment when I bought this apartment. 
and I spent all my money from work to get the furniture and appliances. I really don't have any money right now. No way. So please, lend me the money. I'll pay you back with interest, of course. My hospital is about to find out. There's no way I'd lend you money like that. Don't try to get your ex-girlfriend involved in this mess. You won't lend it to me? You're ditching me? I'll block you then. It doesn't matter to me what happens to you. What should I do, Katie? Eric might get fired from the hospital. I mean, he might get arrested. What? It seems that he had embezzled money from the hospital. This morning, the police suddenly took Eric. They said there was an anonymous tip. Oh my, that's terrible. The police asked me if I knew anything about it. Just when I thought I was finally released, I got a call from the hospital. The director of the hospital called me and said, I'll never forgive you. I even attended your wedding. What an ungrateful couple you are. No wonder the director was so angry. I wonder what will happen to me now. Maybe I'll have to give up this condo. Not maybe, you will have to. I heard you made a good down payment, but you still have a loan, right? You still have some left, don't you? How are you supposed to pay that loan if you don't have any savings? I don't know! I have no idea what I'm going to do if Eric doesn't come back. What's going to happen to my life, my money, my future? I don't know what to do, so please help me, anyone! Come on. Do you think that there is anyone who can help you? Think for yourself and do something about it. That's why I'm texting you, Katie! I beg you, please help me. I want you to let me stay with you and your husband. Huh? You live on the top floor, right? Then it's a big place and there's enough room for just one person, right? You have a lot of money. You can support one friend, right? No way. Wait a minute. Are you asking me to pay for your living expenses as well? Aren't we friends, Katie? Your childhood friend is in trouble. Won't you help? We're not friends anymore. That's why I wouldn't let you live here. Oh, no! Don't tell me you're really going to abandon me. I could lose my husband, money. You're abandoning your childhood friend like that? You're not going to help me? Why don't you just tell the police that you're your husband's accomplice too? Then you and Eric can stay at the police station together. What? You and Eric must be so close that you've never had a fight. You should be with him. Well, I have a dinner date with my husband. Our reservation is almost ready, so bye. After that, Eric was fired from his job. He still hasn't been released from jail. In the meantime, he had to let go of the condo he had bought. I heard that they sold all the furniture and appliances and used the money to pay back the hospital. But it still wasn't enough. For the time being, Nicole will have to work and pay back the money. And as for Nicole... All the rich friends she befriended after her marriage ignored her. Even her old friends say, You treated everyone like they were poor, so what's the point now? And no one would help her. Even her parents, who are her only hope. They tell her that they don't want to be seen by the neighbors, so please don't come back. Now she lives alone in a cheap apartment, waiting for the day Eric comes back. Chelsea? Reply! Hey! 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 Come on, hey! What is it? Finally, you answered. Can I talk to you now? I can't. I'm busy. Well then... Wait a minute! It'll be over soon! Your over soon is always pain in the ass story. Just listen to me. Our father-in-law's funeral was over yesterday. So you can take it easy now, can't you? No, I can't. Things are still very hectic. Not only me, but all the relatives are busy. You're the only one taking it easy. Ha ha! So, now that our father-in-law is finally gone... You'll give us that house and land you lived in with them, right? Huh? I decided the distribution of his inheritance on my own. 
will take the house and the land. Is that okay with you? Not okay at all. Why not? My husband is the eldest son. It's too big for you and your husband to live in. It's not for me to say. But my husband, the eldest son of the family, wants it. You have to give it to him, right? Milton, you aren't just saying this on your own. Milton is? Yes, yes, Milton says so. He's the eldest son, so it's only natural, right? Huh? I thought Milton was at least a little better. I knew it. You are a couple with no brains. What do you mean I knew it? The land and the house are in our father-in-law's name. And what to do with it is for your husband and Hank to decide. You're so uptight! All you have to do is say, I'm giving the house and land to my brother-in-law and his wife. You're persistent, aren't you? Besides, I don't want to give the house and the land left by my father-in-law and his wife to people who haven't done a good job of taking care of their family. Even now, you're kicking back, hiding from the post-funeral chaos. You're so tight-assed. How can you call someone tight-assed when you don't even know them? Before he died, our father-in-law used to say that he couldn't have a conversation with you guys. Was that? I am Chelsea. I've been running my father-in-law's company with my husband, Hank. My mother-in-law passed away a few years ago, and my father-in-law has been in nursing care since his health deteriorated this year, and he passed away the other day. By the way, this brother and sister-in-law, although they come to us when they are in need of money, have never tried to help us in any way, either in caring for my in-laws or in the work because they think we are stupid. However, as soon as my father-in-law passed away, my brother-in-law and his wife came to me and demanded that I give them the house and the land. Even though he's an in-law, I feel so much better now that that parent is gone. Really? You were such a nuisance, so he was very strict with you. He wanted you to learn English properly. What the hell? I'm American! What? You mean your native language is English? I thought it wasn't, since you're so hard to communicate with. You've got to be kidding me. You people have no common sense. What? I went all the way out there for the funeral. I was tired, exhausted, and not even one thank you. Oh, thanks. You've got to be kidding me. Milton said so too. He said, you two are really useless. I'm embarrassed to be praised by the number one and number two ranked pieces of trash in the world. I'm very honored. Huh? Oh, honored. It's pronounced honored. It means to be recognized by an amazing person. You've learned another English word. I'm glad you're getting smarter. Shut up! I know that much. You didn't help us with your father-in-law's funeral. Not even an inch, did you? Trashiana. It's Juliana! Milton said it's too much trouble. The eldest son and his wife are supposed to stand tall at times like this. At least at times like this, please follow the rules of the normal human world. People are watching. If they find out you're not human, you'll be in big trouble. I won't forget that! My husband Hank did everything from the funeral preparations to the formalities, you know? It's the younger brother and his wife's job to make things easy for older brother and his wife. That's common practice, isn't it? You should be rather honored to be working for us. Oh, you used the word you just learned, honored, right away. You're so good at reviewing. Don't be silly! That's my line. You made us do everything and you acted like it's a matter of course. After the funeral, you just ate some food and went home. They are your relatives, so don't you think you should wait till everybody has gone home? Isn't it a question of whether or not you feel that way? Isn't that right, Trashiana? 
What's the matter with you? Don't you dare change my name to trash. I was just expressing my true feelings, so don't worry about it. You really piss me off. In the first place, Milton didn't do anything, so Hank became a pallbearer, right? I couldn't even discuss with Milton whether he would be a pallbearer or not. If you are the eldest son, shouldn't you at least be a pallbearer? You're so bitchy. You lived and worked with our father-in-law. We did the same thing with our mother-in-law. I don't remember that. It doesn't matter who the mourners are. Also, you guys made fun of the business your father-in-law started, didn't you? Because he wasn't making any money at all. So you're poor and have no time to spare. I mean, it's like, thank you for working so hard, you know. I can't stand to see people so miserable. Which one of us is poor? He has never received any money back after begging for it. That was a favor from our father-in-law. I remember it was a loan. When you lend it to someone, you say you intend to give it to them. You also took out the condolence money without permission and took it home, didn't you? About $7,000? That's no surprise. Milton is the eldest son. He wasn't even a mourner. So it doesn't matter if he's a mourner or not. He's the eldest son. So you abandoned the funeral preparations at the cleanup? We took a plane to go there, stayed at a hotel, and paid for it. Huh? You're too stupid to talk to. Watch the tone. You're the second son's wife. You should know better. You're the one who should know better. Huh? What you're doing is just stealing money. Shut up, ugly! Have you finally become so bad mouth that all you can say is bad words that don't have anything to do with anything? You'd better learn more English. Just return the money. Do you perhaps not know the word thief? I'm not a thief. We are the eldest couple, so it's only natural that we have the right to receive it. We traveled a long way for you, so it's also in lieu of travel expenses. So this is money we should receive. How can you think like that? I'm never going to return it. Okay. And I'll take the land and the house too. Take care of the formalities. Chelsea, when are you going to give it to me? If you want me to sign a contract or something, I'll come to you on my own dime. Huh? What are you talking about? The house and land. I won't sign it. Hank contacted you, didn't he? You're really inflexible, Chelsea, you know that? That Hank too, though. Trashiana and Trashton are greedy thieves with flexible minds. I respect that. After all, to do bad things, you need bad ideas, don't you? Those of us who live honestly are amazed at the thought process of greedy thieves. I'm not greedy, and stop calling me trash! I'm just saying, we're the eldest, and we have a natural right to it. It's because you heard about the redevelopment of this area anyway, and you found out that the price of land has gone up, didn't you? Huh? I didn't know. Don't lie to me like that. You have good ideas, but you're not a good liar. What are you talking about? I really didn't know. Up to now, you've complained to me about the house and the land, that it's in the middle of nowhere, that it's dirty, that it's a real estate problem. You've said a lot of things about the house and the land you didn't like. That's why I'm taking it for you. Families have to help each other. Talk in your sleep when you're sleeping. Are you an idiot? That's terrible! I don't want anything to do with the people who disrespected my father-in-law and mother-in-law and left us to take care of them. I mean, don't you guys know? Know what? That both your father-in-law and mother-in-law were going into a lot of debt behind your back, you know? Oh, debt? They were both working. So what does that say about them as parents? 
Milton was also appalled. Apart from a wife's point of view, that's too stupid. We'll take the house and the land. All you get is the debt. I told you that you're the one who's stupid. That debt is all for you too. What? Milton's tuition for college. Yours and Milton's wedding and honeymoon expenses. Your living expenses. Milton had his father pay for his new car and he borrowed money to pay for it all. Huh? Seriously? And do you know who he owed the money to? Huh? Isn't it usually a bank or something? Nope. It's a consumer loan company with a strict collection policy. Right after he borrowed the money, your father-in-law got sick, so he was in a pinch because he couldn't pay it back. So, Hank and I worked hard to repay the debt. My father-in-law apologized to us on more than one occasion. Oh, that's great that you got rid of the debt. So, so you'll give us the house and land. So I'll charge you and your husband the entire amount of the debt. Huh? I have all the IOUs from that time. So far, it's about $180,000. 180? Also, in our father-in-law's will, it states that all of his property, including the land and the house, will be given to us. Huh? Huh? Didn't you hear that? I didn't hear it! It says that the eldest son and his wife, who have continuously insulted me, my wife, Hank and Chelsea, will not inherit anything. I can't believe you didn't read such an important will. Come to think of it, you didn't make any funeral arrangements and didn't seem to be interested in it. That's true, too. That's a lie! So please don't contact me except to discuss debt repayment. Shut up! You are going to give me the house and land. What are you talking about when it's not yours? You're an idiot after all. I'll refer you to a psychotherapist, okay? Stop changing the conversation! It's impossible for the eldest son to get zero inheritance. We'll go to court for what the eldest son gets. Well, then the numerous abusive comments you guys made to us and my parents-in-law will also come to light. If you're okay with that, then let's go to court. What? Oh, but if we do that, you'll lose your inheritance at one shot. So that would be a quicker way to settle the matter. I realized that it would be less stress for me too. I can avoid all the inconvenience. Well then, with that in mind, I'll see you in court. Wait a minute! What? Let's not go to court! Then your father's inheritance won't go to you, okay? That's no good! Please! I don't care what it is. Just divide it up, even if it's just a corner piece of land. Um, no. If I don't get my inheritance, I'm in trouble! Please! Oh, did you think the redevelopment would raise the price of the land so you bought a car or something? Um, why do you know that? I heard it from a relative who helped me with the reception at the funeral. They were bragging loudly so everyone knows. Then you know, don't you? I don't understand. Why don't you just get rid of it? I can't do that! I like it, and so does Milton. And you're so stupid you go shopping with money you haven't even received yet. I have no sympathy for you. And since you haven't given me any response, I've contacted the police. The police? Why? Because you didn't return the $7,000 in condolence money. I'm sure a police officer will visit you soon, so please don't run away. Wait a minute! You can't arrest your brother-in-law and his wife. You guys are lower in status than us and don't have that kind of authority. I'm getting tired of talking to an idiot, so I'm not going to bother replying. Don't call me an idiot. If you want to make excuses, the police will listen to you. I'm not the police, so I don't have the authority to arrest you. The officer will arrest you for me. I'm sorry! Please forgive me! I spent the condolence money, so it's gone. 
Not my problem. You better go make some money or borrow it. I can't. It's terrible. The police and such. Do something. I've been taking care of our mother and father-in-law. I don't care if you couldn't help them because you lived too far away. But don't think I would help the people who have been cursing me, making fun of me, and trampling on my mental health. Please reflect in yourselves. I have reflected on it. Now that I'm sorry, just lend me the money to pay you back this month. I'll block you. Even if it's only $500. Please, please give me the money. So they received a visit from police and were taken to the police station just like that. They sold their household goods and cars to pay off the debt, but it still wasn't enough, so they eventually had their wages seized. On the other hand, Hank and Chelsea, who inherited the house and land, are running the company left by their father-in-law, gradually increasing sales. Milton and Juliana had divorced in no time. It seems that Milton and Juliana have sent Hank and Chelsea several messages asking them for money, but were blocked and are still unaware of it. You promised not to contact me anymore, didn't you? Sorry. I haven't heard from you in a while. I don't want to hear it. I see. Then I'll refrain from calling. How are the kids? Do you need money or anything? I'm making good money. Don't worry. You just take care of your own family now. You're tied to someone you love enough to cheat with. You don't have time to call your divorced ex-wife, do you? So, actually, I, um... She kind of left... I haven't heard from her in a while. Oh my, so your ex-mistress wife ran away too? It's just that you met your true soulmate a little late. Don't be like that. Why not? You told me to my face when you divorced me. You wish you had met her before you met me. You said the love you felt for me was fake and the love you felt for her was your real destiny. That was a long time ago. That's enough. It was only six months ago. Your old days are so close, aren't they? Don't make fun of me. I'm in a bit of trouble. You're the only one I can rely on. What's wrong? Don't you have anyone to take care of your parents? Don't you have someone to cook you three meals a day? Is your house trashed because there is no one to clean it? Do you have no money because there are fewer people to make money? Are you having a hard time because your neighbors are cutting you off from the rest of the neighborhood? If you think the neighbors are strangely distant, it's your doing, isn't it? You got divorced and married another woman right after. I think the neighbors were just trying to understand. <laughs> you think I'm the only one you can count on in a situation like that? You're pathetic, aren't you? Anyway, let's put all that aside. I'm pretty much like you said. I'm in trouble on so many levels. Now, I finally realize how hard you've been working. So, I was wondering if you could help me out a little bit. You're the only one I can ask. Well, why don't you ask your wife to come back? I know she's a nice bubbly person. <laughs> she said she'd take care of the in-laws and do the housework better than me. She'll be back soon. She's your soulmate. I'm sure you'll get over this fight and your love bond will grow stronger. It's called the test of love. Yeah, but I can't get a hold of her. Don't be mean. Just help me out a little. We were together once. No, we've already filed for divorce and are complete strangers. You have a strong bond that I can't interfere with. I'm sure you'll be able to overcome any difficulties that come your way. I was really out of my mind at the time. I realized how great you were after I lost you. You were my destiny. I was so blinded by that girl 
that I lost sight of true love. Hey, can't we start over? I'll help you with the house this time. Can't you come back? I really can't help you at this stage of life. <laughs> I had to take care of two elderly people, one bedridden and the other with dementia, while doing housework, childcare, and work. And if I made a mistake once in a while, I got yelled by my husband who did nothing. I don't want to go back to that kind of hellish life. I have had enough of the pit in my stomach, the quarter-sized bald spot, and the forced weight loss. <laughs> it's so gross that you use bulky words like fate and destiny. How many people are you destined to be with? So, I know you had been trying so hard. I'll try not to give you any more trouble this time. At the point where your mistress has already left you, it's quite obvious, isn't it? You made the woman of your dreams <laughs> do the same thing anyway, didn't you? Your, I'll try my best, is really just talk. <laughs> it's true. Believe me. What do you expect me to believe about a man who cheated on his wife? If you're going to talk in your sleep, go back to bed. You're really a pathetic little bitch, aren't you? I shouldn't have asked you for a favor. Have it your way. I'll never contact you again. Oh, there was one thing I had to tell you. What? Are you finally ready to give in to my feelings? The installment alimony hasn't been paid for about three months, so maybe it's time to garnish your wages? That's what the lawyer said. Huh? What? I told you I'm in trouble now, didn't I? Can't you at least wait a little bit? I'm begging you, please. Oh, no? You said you shouldn't have asked me for a favor. Oh, things really do change fast. <laughs> no, I'm really sorry. So wait a little longer. Let's really talk about this. Oh no, I never want to hear your voice again. You need to face up to what you've done and the situation you're in. Bye-bye then. Hello, Miranda. Your wedding is cancelled. I got your groom, Keith. Huh? Haha, <laughs> now I'm a celebrity wife. I'm going to spend a lot of money and live happily. Huh, Zoe, what do you mean? I'm not following you. Our wedding is supposed to take place in an hour. Your wedding is cancelled due to the absence of the groom. Keith is marrying me. I'm going to become a member of a very wealthy family. I'm more suitable than you are. What are you talking about all of a sudden? Don't say you want to marry your sister's fiancé on the wedding day. You're being more selfish than usual. If I say I'll marry him, then I'll marry him. Keith wants to marry me too. We're meant for each other. What? Does he want to marry you too? Yes, he does. Keith is in love with me. He's sitting next to me right now. He's already asking if we should go on our honeymoon now. Wait a minute. Keith should be in the groom's waiting room right now. I told you, your wedding has been cancelled. Keith is not there. He's going on a lovely getaway with me. Huh? Hmm, eloping on the wedding day is just like a TV show. I love this kind of thrill. Oh, wait a minute, are you serious about eloping? Are you really going to marry Keith? Yes, I want to become a rich celebrity wife. You want to become a rich celebrity wife? How old do you think Keith is? Keith is 38. The same age as me. And you're 24. He's much older than you are. Age has nothing to do with it. Besides, I really like older men. Guys my age are too immature. No, no, no. This is impossible. My sister stole my groom? On the day of the wedding? My sister is eloping with my groom? You're my sister. You know me well, don't you? 
I love money more than anything in the world. And I love to be pampered. An older man from a wealthy family is exactly the man of my dream. I wouldn't give him up to you. Zoe. I feel bad for you. You were about to get married. I'll buy you some souvenirs on our honeymoon to make it up for it. See you later. Huh? Keith has already arranged our plane tickets. The first class is too good to be true. This is so great. No way. Wait. Are you guys really going to leave like this? Yep. Please take care. Keith and I will go home when the situation settles down. I'm sorry, Miranda. You heard what the staff said, right? I didn't expect my brother to do this suddenly. I'll find him immediately, so please wait in the bride's waiting room. No, I'm the one who should apologize. I'm genuinely sorry for the trouble my sister caused. It seems that my sister took Keith away. What? What do you mean? My sister contacted me just a few minutes ago. They are getting married. What? Getting married? Your sister is very young. Why does she want to marry my brother? I have no idea, but she sounds happy. Oh no, that's not true. Running away on his wedding day? This has happened before. I'm really sorry about our sister. I don't even know what to say to apologize. No, it's us who should apologize. I never thought my brother would betray my father. I'm sorry for the trouble my brother has caused you. No, it's my fault. No, 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 no. I'm the one who's sorry. Let's leave the apologies at this point and work on each other for now, shall we? I'm sorry you've been caught up in the messy sibling relationship. Your sister has been giving you a hard time, too. Yes. I can tell by reading your text. You are having a hard time with your sister, aren't you? You knew. My sister is 14 years younger than me. She was my parents' long-awaited second child. Zoe was spoiled and became more and more of a selfish monster. After all, it's similar to our family, isn't it? My brother was spoiled because he was the eldest son of the family. He doesn't think anything of making others clean up his mess. You have gone through a lot of hardships as a younger brother. Yes. Let's celebrate the birth of a perfect team, shall we? It's not like you wanted to marry my brother. Congratulations on the breakup of your engagement. What? I've heard about the situation from my parents, so please leave the rest to me. It's about time those two take responsibility for their behaviors. Oh, what on earth are you planning to do? Nothing special. I'm just going to make them take responsibility. Please stay quiet. I won't make it worse. Woohoo! I'm finally a celebrity wife. We've registered our marriage. That was quick. Keith said it's better to do this as soon as possible. He wanted to make me his wife as soon as possible. I can't believe how passionate he is. Being a young girl is a huge benefit. So, where are you now? Have you arrived at the airport yet? We've already boarded. Wow. The first class is the first to board. I feel so superior to skip the other poor passengers. I'm so happy that I'll be able to do this every time. Hey Zoe, I want to double check just to be sure, okay? Do you really want to marry Keith? Don't you regret anything about marrying Keith? What's with that mysterious question? How can I have any regrets after marrying a rich guy? I feel a sense of accomplishment. 
I became a celebrity wife. Well... Did you think I might feel a little guilty? Did you think I'd regret hurting you and giving back to you? I'm sorry, but I don't feel guilty at all. He said he'd rather have me than some old hag. I'm more suitable than you. A miserable woman in her late 30s. Thank you. What? That's why you married him. Thank you, Zoe. I didn't realize you thought about me that much. What? Thank you for marrying Keith? I don't understand why you're thanking me. I ruined your wedding. You lost your chance of getting married. I'm so glad you ruined it. I really didn't want to marry that guy. What? What's that supposed to mean? Why don't you like him? You could have been a celebrity wife. If he really was part of a wealthy family. Huh? You probably don't know this, but Keats' parents gave up on him long ago. Keats' brother Steve is taking over his parents' business. Huh? Wait a minute. What do you mean? He's the eldest son. His parents spoiled him because he was the eldest son. As a result, he turned out to be just a lazy person. On the other hand, Steve is trusted by everyone around him. They decided to change the air. That's a lie. I didn't know that. His parents never mentioned that either. Of course, they wouldn't want anyone to know that their eldest son has failed so badly. They only informed a few of us about the change of heir. They were planning to officially name Steve as the heir. After the wedding. Really? I thought it was strange. I couldn't believe one of the wealthiest families in this area wanted me to become their son's wife. Mom and Dad wanted to get rid of me. And Keith's parents wanted to get rid of him. Wait a minute. Did mom and dad arrange your marriage? I thought you guys were dating for a while. Huh? I didn't hear anything about that. I didn't hear anything about that from mom and dad. I thought you guys were dating. I thought you worked so hard to win over a rich guy. You really had no idea. Our parents decided on this marriage. They said that it would be difficult for you to get married if I didn't get married. They forced me to accept this marriage for some silly reason. What? They wanted to get rid of their oldest daughter as soon as possible. They were happy that I would be a part of a wealthy family. They didn't even consider my feelings. I really wanted to say no, but I couldn't. So thank you so much for ruining it for me. You don't have to thank me. Instead, think about what I can do. I don't need him anymore. He ruined my plan to become a celebrity wife. What in the world did I marry an older man for? But you married for money from the start, right? Then at least you'll be able to make ends meet. What? He may be a spoiled brat, but he is the oldest son of a corporate CEO. He was supposed to receive a certain amount of money every year after our marriage. I don't know the details, but he was given enough money. Oh yeah! That's so awesome! I don't have to deal with the whole air problem and can still be rich. Oh well, if that's how it works, no problem. It's the best thing that could have happened. You really are all about money. I'm going on my honeymoon with him as planned. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with him. Thank you for your hard work. You got my brother out of our house. Thank you for your hard work. I'm glad I didn't have to marry him. Thanks to you, I even got a limony paid. My sister was also a cause of this, but thank you so much. No, no, of course. 
Your sister is indeed very involved. But he was the one who made a move on a woman who is much younger. And making a move on the bride's sister is so messed up. We have no reason to blame you. Thank you for standing up for us. Both parents could have made a big problem out of it. Thank you so much for everything. You keep thanking me, but it's good for my family too. Oh, really? My family was having a hard time with my brother. After my parents told him that I would be taking over the business, my brother started to spend a lot more. He was a real money grubber. I didn't realize that. My parents were trying to stop him, but it was difficult for them. I always thought an opportunity to take away my brother's credit cards. What? This incident was a great opportunity. It was a shock for my parents. I was able to stop all of my brother's cards. With my parents' permission, of course. Well, just out of curiosity, what will happen to Keith if those cars are stopped? You won't be able to buy anything. Everything from grocery to brand name explosions. My brother used the black card my parents gave him. I see. Does that mean the honeymoon will end today? I guess so. Thank you for the great information. I have to leave my parents' house before they rush back. I need to go now. Good luck with moving out. Let's enjoy our life now that we have no siblings to get in the way. Yes, I agree. I'll do my best with a fresh start and a clear mind. Hey, Miranda. Send me the money now. I need money for the plane ticket home. First class for two, 20,000. Transfer the money to my account right now. What? Keith's credit card suddenly stopped working. His black card with no limit was working until just now. I wanted to buy a return ticket because I can't shop anymore. You guys didn't bring any cash? I didn't bring anything. I only have my phone and he only has his credit card. He says he has no cash because he can do anything with his black card. Anything he wants. I don't understand why it's suddenly not working. I wonder when I can use it again. Maybe tomorrow? No, never. Steve stopped Keith's card. Huh? I just heard from him. He thanked me so much. They were having trouble dealing with Keith. This incident was an excellent opportunity to wake up his parents and get them to stop the credit card. What? No way! What did he do? He did the right thing he could do. The right thing? It's terrible! We need to buy a return ticket. What are you going to do? Who will pay for the tickets if we can't use his credit card? I don't think there's anyone. What? First of all, Steve and his parents definitely won't. And, of course, I won't either. The only ones left are mom and dad. I bet they didn't have much money saved up. They spent every penny on you. No way! Wait! If we can't buy tickets, what will happen to us? How are we going to get back? You may be deported because your tourist visas expire. You'll be in trouble. Oh no, that's not true. Can I borrow some money? It doesn't have to be first class. Just send me the money for the economy. I don't want to do that. Why should I give money to scum like you guys? I got some money from Keith's parents. But I don't want to spend it that way. What? Well then, you two work together and do your best. I'm sure you two with guts can handle it. 
Zoe asked mom and dad to send money for her flight home. And as soon as they returned, Zoe and my parents told the other side that the marriage was invalid. My parents accused Keith of taking advantage of young Zoe. They demanded some alimony. However, Steve told everyone what had happened. He had all the screenshots of the text messages I exchanged with Zoe. They could not say anything back anymore. The security guard escorted them to the exit. Keith now relies on Zoe's small income. Zoe and my parents are still expecting the inheritance someday. I wonder how long their patience and money can last. There's one thing they don't know. Steve is taking all the necessary measures to secure his inheritance. Shelly! It's Selena! Don't ignore me! I have something I really want to say to my stepsister. It's an emergency! Selena? It's about time! Sorry, I'm a little busy. Huh? What do you mean you're busy? Your cute stepsister is trying to contact you, so you have to reply within three seconds. Three seconds might be a bit much. What's wrong? You don't usually contact me. I mean, we haven't been in touch since my wedding, right? That's true. I don't think I want to contact you unless it's something serious. Huh? What's with that reply? Your super cute stepsister's taking time to call you, so be more happy. Unlike my introverted stepsister, I'm everyone's idol as a woman and as a human being. Really, because dad remarried, I have to become the little sister of an introvert like you. That's more like my luck's running out, I guess. <laughs> you know what? What's the point? Didn't you say it was an emergency? Oh yeah, I have a question for you. Where am I right now? Is it an emergency? I don't know where you are. What's that? You should be more interested in me. Yeah, but I'm not. You're such a boring girl. Then you don't have to contact me, do you? Why are you talking like that? You're pissing me off. I'm taking up my precious time to contact you. Have some respect for your sister. It's not normal for someone to contact you out of the blue and ask you where they are. That doesn't matter. Where do you think I am? I told you I don't know. Think about it for a minute. Okay, then Los Angeles? What? There's no way I'd be in Los Angeles in this hot weather. Think about it for a minute. You really aren't very smart, are you? You're the one who asked me. Do you have a problem? Just tell me where you are. It really is a shame you can't understand something as simple as this. Okay, I'll tell you. I'm on a trip to New York. Traveling? Yes, my second honeymoon with my handsome and loving husband. Second time? That's great. Then you'd better enjoy your trip instead of talking with me. I know that. Who'd want to be talking to an introvert like you? Then why did you bother to contact me? I really don't get it. I just thought I'd share a little of my happiness with my introverted stepsister. Even if you are an introvert, you'd feel a little sad if your husband treated you coldly. What do you mean your husband is treating you coldly? Just don't go saying weird things off the cuff. Don't get mad at me just because I'm right on the money. It's a miracle that an introvert like you got married to a famous employee of Acme Corporation. And he's a department manager with a promising future. It really doesn't make any sense. I don't know what kind of magic you used to get him. Isn't it about time your husband's magic melted and he left you? Stop screwing around. That's none of your concern. 
And anyway, is that the reason you contacted me? I'm busy. Wait, wait, wait. I want to show you something now. Ta-da! What? You saw the picture, right? Then tell me who I'm in the picture with. But he said he was in New York on business. Don't be shocked. Just say it. I don't want to. Then I'll tell you myself. Don't do it. The correct answer is K. Your precious, precious husband K. Why is this happening? Does this mean that K and I are cuddling? Is that what it means? Why, Selena, aren't you married? Aren't you on a trip right now? And why are you with my husband? And even more so, why do you look so happy together? Why do you think? I'm asking because I don't know. It's simple. It's just that my husband and Kay knew each other. My husband is an elite employee of Nexa Corporation. It's amazing that he knows the boss of Acme Corporation, isn't it? Why are you cuddling with him because the husbands know each other? Because we ran into each other. What? I was walking outside with my husband during the day, and a nice guy was walking alone right in front of us. Then, my husband said, Kay. I asked him who he was. He told me he was from a company my husband does business with. But that, it doesn't mean that you can cuddle together. That's different. I was planning to go to aesthetic salon today and I invited him. He was up for it. And one thing led to another and we just did it. What the hell? Well, it's like we were meant to meet, right? Fateful encounters really do happen, don't they? I thought it was just a story in a drama. Shelly, you seduced my husband. The company Kay works for, Acme Corporation, is a very famous company. It's amazing that he's a department head at such a big company like Acme Corporation at such a young age. 32, right? If he continues like this, it's not just a dream to be the president of Acme Corporation. If that's the case, I have to make him mine, right? My current husband is elite enough, but he's not as good as Kay. He's too good for you who is in the shadows, and I have to have him. Make him mine? Do you know what you're talking about? Kay is my husband, okay? I know that! <laughs> That's why I'm leaving my current husband right away and marrying Kay. Huh? Kay feels that way too. He says he wants to leave you and be with me. It's important to act early with this kind of thing. That's a lie. There's no way my husband would say such a thing. You can ask him if it's a lie or not when he gets back. He says he'll finish his work here early and be back tomorrow. After all... You'll always be under me. You're my sister, but you're still inferior to me. Well, I guess you can't help it if you're an introverted, ugly stepsister. You'll never be able to live up to me. I bet you resent the fact that you became my sister after our parents remarried. Yoo-hoo! You sure text a lot. I wonder why. Oh, you know why. How are you feeling right now? I feel terrible. I haven't felt like doing anything for the past two days. I don't even have an appetite. Oh, that's terrible. You'd better eat something right away, right? Otherwise, you're going to get more and more gloomy. I mean, my husband hasn't come home. Didn't he say he was coming home yesterday? Oh, that's right. I said that, didn't I? Are you still waiting for him to come home? Poor you. You know where he is, don't you? What the hell is going on? I've been trying to reach him, but he hasn't picked up the phone. He hasn't even read my messages. 
That's true because he's had his phone turned off since the day before yesterday. Both of us have. Why are you doing that? Why? Because we want to enjoy our time together, of course. That's why Kay told his company to extend his business trip for one more week. What happened to your husband? Wasn't he with you? We're divorced. Huh? I wanted to divorce him as soon as possible so I could be with Kay. So I divorced him as soon as I could. You just write your name on the divorce papers and submit them. I'm so glad it was so easy. I can't believe it. While on vacation, I feel sorry for your husband. So why don't you marry my ex-husband instead? I'm sure he'd be happy to take a bite out of you now that he's probably in full-on loneliness. Well, I guess he might not be able to stand the gap between me, the super cute one, and my ugly, introverted stepsister. Stop it. I haven't said I'm divorcing yet. Are you still saying that? Kay's heart is already mine. But deep down, you've already made up your mind, right? I wonder about that. Don't be so stubborn. Even if we get divorced, you know it won't end there, right? You stole my husband. Your husband wouldn't just cry himself to sleep. Oh, you want me to give you money? Then there's no problem. I have Kay. He'll take care of all that hassle. After all, he's the general manager of Acme Corporation, and he's a career man. Money-wise, there's no problem at all. Kay will pay my ex-husband's compensation too. Oh yeah, Kay is really reliable. I'm sorry I stole your elite husband. He'll pay the alimony, so don't worry and get a divorce soon. You seem to be pretty confident, but I hope it lasts. What? What's that? Don't think I'm just going to back down like this. Huh? You're so cocky even though you're a loser. There's no way a loser like you can do anything. You're a loser who lost her husband to your sister. If you screw with me too much, there's going to be trouble. Keep that in mind. Repeated provocative calls from Selena. I can't believe she is even a human being, having an affair with my husband and even divorcing her own husband on the same day. I would never forgive Selena for doing this to me. So the next day, I decided to take revenge on both of them. One week, it was short but I had to do everything I could during that time. And after a week, the time finally came. I'm back from my love trip. I guess this is what you mean when you say dreamy. Kate was so great during the trip. I love the fact that I couldn't get enough of it. You're back at last. Thanks to meeting Kate, it was the best trip to New York ever. No one can stop us now. All that's left is for you to write your name on the divorce papers. I've already got them for you. Wow, you're so thoughtful. Then I'll be with Kay sooner than I planned. I wanted to make you happy at least one last time. I wanted it to be a surprise, so I prepared them in time for today. Since when did you become so thoughtful? The other day you told me not to screw with you. Or are you up to something? Yeah, no, but you wouldn't. Ugly, introverted, you couldn't do anything, could you? I can't do anything? Is that what you think? What? I want to take responsibility for what I say. That's why I made you happy in the end. And now, I'm going to make you suffer. Huh? There's no way you can do that. It's not a matter of can't or won't. I mean, I've already done it. What's that? You'll find out soon enough. You just got to the airport, right? Yeah, that's right. Then why don't you come outside? Outside? Everyone's waiting for you too. Everyone? Yes, eight people in all, including me. 
your ex-husband and his parents, our parents, and Kay's parents, one who is the president of the company. Oh! Kay's father is the president? Yes. Acme Corporation was built by his great-grandfather. Then his grandfather took over, then his father took over, and the company has grown over three generations. Because of that, Kay has risen very quickly in the company. Well, quickly sounds good, but in other words, Kay isn't a good worker. He just got promoted to the manager's position because his father is the president of the company. Kay never told me about that. He said he took the entrance exam and worked his way up from an ordinary employee to the general manager. But that means he's going to be the president, right? I was wondering what you were going to say with so much confidence. But you gave me some good news, didn't you? Kay is going to be the president? Are you still dreaming? What do you mean? I'm sure you can guess what's going to happen next. But I'll tell you. Kay is going to be sued for damages he caused to the company. Damages? Kay wasn't just on a business trip. It was a business trip to do business with Nexa Corporation as well. Nexa Corporation! Your ex-husband's company. Acme Corporation and Nexa Corporation have a long-standing business relationship. He was on a business trip for a meeting about a new project. They were just about to wrap things up when Kay suddenly couldn't make it to the meeting and the project was scrapped. Is that... He didn't show up so he could go have fun with you. Kay was in charge of this project, so of course, he has to take responsibility for it. And of course, you're the one who caused it. Do you know why Kay started as an ordinary employee when he is the president's son? According to his father's policy, he was in the process of assessing whether he was the right person for the president while working as a regular employee. I'm sure Kane knows that and has been working diligently until now. Can you say that an employee who is being sued for damages is the right person to be president? Oh no! If things had gone well, he could have been president, but you have ruined everything. Wait a minute! I don't want this to happen just when I'm about to get married to Kay! Then why don't you break up? You're not married yet. That's impossible. I quit my job when I married my ex-husband. I'm sorry to hear that, but it's none of my business. So I don't care what happens to you. Shelly! It's all your fault, isn't it? You're so naive to think you can get forgiveness for messing around with someone's husband. You're an adult. You have to take responsibility. What am I supposed to do if you want me to take responsibility? Pay money? That's right. You'll both have to work your asses off to pay the compensation. How much are the damages? I don't know, but I think it's about $400,000. $400,000? But that's not all. What? You know what, don't you? There's no way this ends with just compensation to the company. You'll have to pay me compensation. Compensation? I have to pay it? Of course you do. You touched my husband and ruined our marriage. Do you think you can just say, Yes, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Come on, Shelly! Your stepsister relationship with me is over. Our parents don't even consider you their daughter anymore. They don't want a girl that steals her sister's husband. Can you please let me off the hook this time? I not only have to pay compensation, but on top of that, I have to pay $400,000, right? Please? Oh, uh, okay. Thank you, sis! Is what you would like me to say, isn't it? Huh? Like the words you said to me until now, I won't forgive you so easily for what you did to me. So to you, I say, I will never forgive you. Huh? Why? Well then, if you'll excuse me, everyone else is at the boarding gate waiting for you two to arrive, so get going. Also, tell Kay that I've given the divorce papers with my name on it to his father. 
I hope Kay is still alive after he gives them to him. Wait a minute! I have nothing more to say to you, so I'm blocking you. Well then, goodbye. Wait! Shelly! Please help me! I'm sorry for everything I've done! Please help me! It was only a week before they were to return, and in that short time, I did what I could, and the results were rewarding. They came to the boarding gate scared after their exchange with me, and in front of them were their family members who were furiously waiting for them. The moment they were in front of everyone, they got down on their knees and kept apologizing to everyone. Kay also received a hard slap from his father. Kay's father is a strong, macho type of guy. He could not help but give him one hard slap, even though he had to hold back his fist because the company's credibility had been shattered. And his mother was disinfecting his father's hands. After that, I heard from an acquaintance that Selena and Kay eventually got married a few months later. But they had to pay 20000 in compensation to me and 15000 to her ex-husband. In addition, they had to pay 400000 in compensation to the company, and within three months, they were divorced. As a result of the divorce, Kay was to pay all the compensation to the company, and Selena was to pay all the compensation to the spouses. Selena asked her parents for help, but they refused, saying they had no daughter. Now they are both working day and night to pay off the debt. I, on the other hand, am free from my stepsister, whom I hate, and am now living a happy and carefree life on my own. Hey, hey, hey. Why are you in this fancy restaurant? At first, I thought a bottom feeder like you couldn't possibly be here. So I had to look twice. What? Did you go to all that trouble to text me that? I went through the trouble of unblocking you. You should thank me for that instead. I didn't ask you to do that. What's your problem? We divorced six years ago. I don't need you, my ex-husband, to tell me what to do now. What the hell? You were at my beck and call when we were married. Aren't you acting cocky now that you're divorced and no longer with me? Who's the arrogant one here? When we were married, you made fun of me, disrespected me, and you treated me like a slave. You were actually a slave, weren't you? You were able to live because of the money I earned while working. It's only natural for you to be thankful to me. Stop it. When I talk to you, you make me feel terrible. That's exactly what I want to say to you. I was in this restaurant first, remember? Don't act arrogantly. You are the poor person who came in after me. Are your companions poor as well? You all came here to keep up with the Joneses, right? The people I'm with are all from work. We're all here to eat because we finished our tasks for the day. It's none of your business. Oh, work, huh? I wonder if there are places that will hire a bitch like you. Don't make fun of me. Before I got married to you, I was a regular employee at a company. I would have continued working if you hadn't forced me to be a housewife. I like what I do. In other words, you and I are both glad we got divorced. But hey, it's the type of company that hires anyone, right? I bet the pay isn't that great either. Don't bring all your trashy friends to this fancy restaurant. Remember how this place is known for its high-end Italian cuisine? Would you shut up? Besides me, everyone else here is amazing. Much more than you can imagine. Don't make me laugh. I can tell they're incompetent just by looking at them. You should feel sorry for comparing them to an elitist like me. Enough. True, I was the one who arrived at the restaurant after you, and I apologize for that. But we're strangers now, so don't mess with me. See ya. Where did you go? Did you go to the bathroom or something? 
I'm just changing my makeup in the bathroom. What do you want? I just looked up and you were gone. I assumed you couldn't pay the bill and fled after you ate. Excuse me? There's no way I would do something like that. Unlike you, I have common sense, so don't worry. Don't talk as if I don't have common sense. Do you have any money? It's pretty expensive here. Don't worry. I don't come to restaurants I can't afford. Hmm. You seem to have a lot of leeways, don't you? But I'm guessing you can't all pay the bill. That's why you've all been sitting here for so long. Can you please stop making assumptions? We're all just discussing our future work plans. We didn't come here just to eat like you. We're all hard-working people. You've been making fun of me for a long time, haven't you? Don't talk as if I'm not a hard worker. I was going to pay for your meal, but forget it. No thanks. I would have refused even if you had offered to pay me. You really are acting like a bitch. Well, I guess you're right. You've always been good at helping yourself to others' wallets. There are a lot of guys in your group. What are you trying to say? I mean, I'm just thinking you'll flirt with the guys and then ask them to pay for you. Excuse me? Why are you saying that? When did I do that? You seem to be good at it. You fooled me like that too. Fooled you? When did I fool you? You're the one who pretended to be nice to me and then changed your tune after we married. I don't know what you're talking about. When we first met, you pretended to be a vulnerable woman, didn't you? I thought I had to protect you. I guess I got the raw deal. You're the worst. I believe you have a memory problem. In our marriage, you did whatever you wanted. And now you're blaming me for it? You are pathetic. I'm just telling you the truth. Just having a poor person like you in the same room with me makes me uneasy. But now it's even worse because you're becoming arrogant enough to talk back to me. So why don't you just stop contacting me? I'm already divorced from you. I'm a stranger and I don't need you to tell me what to do. I don't want anything to do with you anymore. Goodbye. Hey, Olivia. You blocked my WhatsApp, didn't you? What? How come? Why are you still sending me messages after I blocked you and deleted your phone number? I went to the trouble of changing my phone number. You should be grateful for my efforts. Be grateful? It's rather annoying. What the hell are you doing? Didn't I tell you to stay out of my life? No, I was pretty drunk at the time. But the next day when I woke up and thought about it calmly, I recalled how beautiful you've grown. Huh? Don't say weird things out of nowhere. What are you up to? Come on, that's mean. I'm not up to anything. I just wanted to speak with you while I was sober. What's the matter with you? You were making fun of me the other day. My bad. But I'm really surprised, you know. You looked so much better than you did when we divorced. Maybe you lost some weight. When you and I were married, Every day was stressful. All I could do was blame it on food. I had to calm myself down by eating every day. I think I was much fatter than I am now. People change, don't they? Anyway, you're beautiful now. I believe you are worthy of being taken on a date by me. So, I'll take you out to dinner. If I go out with you, I'm afraid the meal will be terrible. Huh? Hey, you, what do you mean by that? I mean it literally. You enjoy having dinner with people you like. It enhances the flavor of good food. If you eat a delicious meal with someone you don't like, the delicious meal will be tasteless. It would be a waste, wouldn't it? Do you even know what you're talking about? You're not going to get away with mocking me. When we were a couple, I used to be scared of your threats but I'm no longer the type of woman who is scared of such things. Trying to persuade me is pointless. Damn, what a jerk you are. I offered to buy you a nice meal, 
and I even told you that you looked better than before. I didn't ask for it. On the other hand, you've grown sloppy, haven't you? I'm sure you eat a lot of prepared foods, don't you? I see you drinking as much as you want and living a sloppy lifestyle. What the hell? That's all because you left. It's because you divorced and abandoned your husband's care. That's why I'm in this mess. You haven't changed your attitude toward blaming others. Well, I don't really care because we're strangers now. If you continue to be like this, you will lose more and more people around you. Shut up. It's none of your business. I forgave you and invited you out for a dinner. I swear, you'll regret turning me down. On the contrary, I'll always make the same choice, no matter how many times you ask. It's a waste of my time to get involved with someone like you. You bitch. You keep saying cocky things. I'm going to crush you, I swear. You're free to do what you want. I'm not a weak woman who will be crushed by you. See you. Hey, Olivia. Why aren't you at your parents' house? I went to pick you up. What? What do you mean you came to pick me up? I went to your parents' house to pick you up, but you were not there. Your dad splattered water on me. It was a real mess. Don't be ridiculous. Why did you go to my parents' house? Dad and Mom have nothing to do with this. Don't bother them. What are you talking about? Don't act as if my presence is a bother. Actually, it is. When my dad found out I was being harassed by you, he got very angry and my mom was crying. They didn't want to meet you. I'm sure they didn't even want to see your face. Why would you do such an insane thing? I went there just to pick you up. I was just trying to be nice to you. I said it's annoying. Don't go to my parents' house because I no longer live there. So that means you live alone, huh? In that case, you can come home. What? What are you talking about? You've been living alone since we got divorced, right? I'll move in with you because you're probably lonely. I've already remarried. What? Remarried? You? Yes, me. I have a partner, so I'm not alone, and I have enough company. So no thanks. Well, even if I didn't have a partner, I wouldn't rely on you. What the hell? To begin with, aren't you lying that you got remarried? I can't believe that a dullard like you would remarry. I'm the only one who would take a no-good woman like you. That's enough. I understand that you still think I'm a fool, but I haven't sunk to the level of being disrespected by you. Why don't you look in the mirror before you speak negatively about others? What are you talking about? I'm perfect. Sure, I've put on some weight recently, but I have a handsome face and a good job. If you were to have a husband, he would be someone like me. On the other hand, you have terrible personalities, so it balances out. Or it could have the opposite effect on you. I'm not sure. Go to hell. I'll never forgive you for making fun of me. Don't you forget. I'll get my revenge. It's been a long time, Olivia. You did remarry, didn't you? Do you finally believe me? I didn't believe it at first, either. I've been looking into you for the past week. Then I saw you walking with someone who looked like your husband. You were spying on me? Don't say weird things. But I didn't have a choice. If you hadn't remarried, I would have taken you. No thanks. I told you, even if I don't have a partner, I don't want you. Don't be shy. You marry that guy because you had no choice, right? Perhaps you were concerned about public opinion, but he is no good. He appears unprofessional and has a slouchy face. Can you please stop saying bad things about my husband? At least he is far more capable than you. Oh, come on. You just want to put up a front like that, don't you? You won't be able to control your emotions if you don't. If you don't think you married someone better than me, I'm sure you'll regret divorcing me. 
What are you trying to say? I'm not trying to put up a front. He's a really great guy. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I already know he's not a good guy. Look, Olivia, break up with that jerk and remarry me. No thanks. You know what happens if you don't obey me, right? If you refuse to marry me, your husband will be in trouble. I can go to your husband's workplace and speak with him. If you say so, why don't you do it? What? What's with that attitude? You don't think I can do it? Well, it's not like that. I'm just saying if you can do it, go for it. Are you sure? I'm really going to do it. I don't care if you regret it later. You're the one who'll regret it later. Huh? Why? I'll blackmail your husband into divorcing you. In the end, I'll get you back and the whole thing will be over, right? Well, if you do that, you know, I think it would end your position at the company. What do you mean? You were investigating me, but didn't you look into him? He's the next president of the parent company of your company. Huh? My company's parent company? And he's the next president? I used to work for the same company as you, remember? I didn't want to work for the same company as you again after my divorce. So I took a chance and went to the parent company for an interview. And I got in. Oh, for real? For real! And while I was working, I met a guy who is now my husband. Two years ago, I got remarried. Now I have a baby in my belly and I'm the happiest I've ever been. So, you know, will you stop bothering me? Oh, well, I didn't know that. And, you know, I just wanted to start over with you. That's all. Really? You're going to declare war on my husband? Well, if you want to do that, be my guest. You're the one who's going to get crushed, though. As soon as I texted this, Isaac stopped replying to me completely. I spoke with a co-worker who works for the same company as Isaac, and she informed me that Isaac has recently been working harder and more seriously. <laughs> On the other hand, I had a baby six months later. I am having the most wonderful time of my life. Hello, Sarah. Thank you for the other day. I'm becoming a PTA committee member for the first time, so... I hope you can teach me a lot of things about it. Hey, Anna. Sure. Let's do our best for a year. Definitely. I'll do my best. Hello, kindergarten. The committee members are quite busy. I'm sure it's a lot of work for a first-timer. I'm sorry you got appointed. No, no. I'm rather happy. I've been wanting to talk to Sarah for a long time. What? With me? Because your mom friends group is so cool, you know. Some of them are wives of landowners who are well known in their hometowns. There's also a wife whose husband's annual income is over a million dollars and lives in a luxury mansion. And there's also Miss Nicole, a real heiress from a super prestigious family. It's like a celebrity mom friends group, isn't it? Everyone dreams to be one of them. So, I am really lucky to be close to you. My husband is an ordinary office worker, so I don't really have the chance to talk to people in that kind of chosen group. Chosen group? It's not that big of a deal. It's just that we live close to each other and our kids are in the same class. But it's still so cool. I'm glad to be a committee member with you. I hope we can be a great team. I'm glad to hear you say that. I hope for that too. I was wondering if you want. Let's have a mom friends gathering at our place so we can know each other. Mom friends gathering? Actually, I'm a hotel owner. My husband is a very average office worker, but I'm a business owner. Have you heard of the Silver Lining Hotel? It's a bit far from here though. What? Yeah, I know the place. I've been there. It's a nice hotel. I'm not to brag, but yeah. The rooms are clean, the view is nice, and the bath is spacious. I'm proud to say that the service is excellent. So, I'd like to hold a gathering at a hotel. We will prepare a sweet room and lunch for you. So, why don't you feel like taking a day trip? 
We also have a kids room and other facilities for children in the hotel. So you can bring your children along with you. I'll also give you a discount as you're my friend now. Are you sure? That's very nice of you. Of course, we're friends. Don't be shy. Besides, other moms are used to staying in the suites, right? I'm not sure if they will be satisfied with a $3,000 per night room. A $3,000 room? Are you sure we can stay in such a luxurious place? Yes. If I can get close to those cool moms, I'm okay with this. Well then, I'll take it up on your offer. I'll wait and see what everyone else has to say. That's fine. If everyone is interested in joining, please let me know their contacts. It's faster if we communicate directly with each other. Sure, I'll ask everyone. Thank you very much. Good morning, Anna. I'm at a meeting place you told me about. But everyone else didn't show up when it was time to meet. Did I get the time wrong? Wasn't the meeting time 10? Sarah, good morning. They have all already arrived at the hotel. Huh? Why? Why? Because we decided to meet at the hotel. I'm already showing their rooms now. Meeting at a hotel? But you told us to meet at a station and shuttle bus would pick us up from the hotel. When did this change? I don't think I received any message about it. I did inform you all though, didn't I? Really? Then I must have been mistaken. Well, we're on our way there now. We'll be a little late, but we were supposed to have lunch, so we will make it right. What? You're coming? I haven't prepared a seat for Sarah. What? I didn't invite you in the first place. The only people I invited were the celebrity moms, Nicole and others. I don't have a meal for you. Oh no, what are you gonna eat? Even if you come, there's nothing to serve but fresh air. <laughs> Coming to a gathering without an invitation? It's just too awkward, isn't it? What? But you asked me at first to have a gathering with me. Well, I'm very sorry. Only celebrities above a certain level are allowed to come to a hotel. Poor people are not allowed. What? Poor people? That's because you are. Sarah, you're always wearing cheap clothes and bags. And your face obviously can tell you that you're a poor person. You look out of place from the crowd of celebrity moms who wear branded clothes. It looks like you're just taking advantage of the celebrity moms. It's beyond ridiculous. It's pathetic. Also, you said that a suite that costs $3,000 a night is luxury. It's beyond shameful that such a poor person wants to join us. What? When people who don't have a common sense like you come, it lowers the class of the hotel, you know. It'll be embarrassing to see you get all excited like an outsider. So, please don't come to our hotel by mistake. If you have money for luxury, why don't you save it? It's hard to be poor, isn't it? Even if you want to stay in a $3,000 room, you must have worked hard for a year to save up the money. Or, is one year not enough? I've never been poor, so I can't imagine what it'd be like. Why do you say such horrible things? What did I ever do to you? Did you lie to me when you said you wanted to be friends with me? You didn't do anything to me. But I can't be friends with a poor person. I just used you to cross with celebrity moms. Now I have the celebrity mom's contacts. I'm done with you. Thank you for helping me. I'll join the celebrity mom's group from now on. Why don't you stay at a cheap hotel if you're poor? Anna, I'm sorry to bother you. Do you have a minute? I'd like to ask you something. Yes, of course. What's wrong, Miss Nicole? Was there something in your room that bothered you? Sorry. I just showed you around and went back to work. No, the room is very clean and spacious and has a nice view. I'm very happy with it. I'm glad to hear that. I did my best to get you a nice room. So, what is it that you want to ask me? Sarah hasn't arrived yet. I wonder what's wrong. I've sent her a message, but I haven't received any reply. Since it was you who organized this, I thought you might know something about it. Um, don't worry about her. She told me she can't make it today. Huh? She won't attend? Why not? She said she suddenly got sick. 
Actually, she messaged me saying she was sorry and she had to go back home. Oh no, really? Is it true that she's not feeling well? I didn't hear anything about that. I'm worried because everyone else hasn't heard anything either. It doesn't seem to be anything serious, so she's fine. She texted me in the usual tone. So it's maybe it's just a cold or something. Well, don't worry about that lady. Just enjoy your stay here. But Sarah left without a word to us. It's so weird. Something must have happened. I'm sorry, even though you've kindly invited us. I'm going back to check on Sarah, if you'll excuse me. Wait a minute, there's no need for you to do that. I mean, anyway, she won't be able to enter our hotel. Poor people are not allowed to come in. If you force to bring her here, you'll make that lady even more miserable. Well, I'm fine with that. It might be as interesting as today's entertainment show. Excuse me? I mean, doesn't the person look so out of place in this hotel? She's wearing cheap clothes and she looks kind of poor overall. She looks out of place among the celebrity moms group. To be honest, she doesn't match up well with you and other celebrity moms. Don't worry about the poor lady catching a cold or not. How dare you? How dare you be so rude? Because, in fact, it's true, isn't it? She's just a parasite on you and the others, isn't she? You should take this opportunity to capitalize with her. Celebrities should get along with other celebrities. From now on, I'll entertain you all on her behalf. Forget about the poor lady and you should enjoy your stay here. Now, our chef has prepared a delicious lunch for you. I'm sure the poor lady won't understand the taste and you celebrities will be satisfied. I'm sorry. We're going to have to leave now. What? If Sarah is banned because she's poor, I'm not even allowed to enter the premises. Naturally, I'm not even qualified to have lunch. Huh? What? What do you mean? Did you know? Sarah is a present of the famous Greenwood's furniture. What? The furniture manufacturer? That's right. Of course you know about Greenwood furniture. I noticed there's furniture from Greenwood's furniture everywhere in this hotel. The oriental, nostalgic, yet modern design. There's no mistake in it. We have custom-made peace at home, too. Yes, of course. A few years ago, when there was a discussion about replacing the aging equipment inside the building, my father-in-law fell in love with the furniture from Greenwood's furniture and had everything made by them. But there's no way Sarah is a present of the company. If she was a present of Greenwood furniture, she'll be a super celebrity. Sarah looks like a poor person in every way, both in looks and personality. Miss Nicole, are you trying to prank me with such a lie? I would never tell such a lie. Then really... Sarah always used this hotel every year for company parties and New Year's parties. She always recommended it to people she knew, because the bath, the food, and the service were all very good. But the hotel called Sarah a poor person and banned her from the hotel. No, that's... I didn't know. Oh, you can treat your guests like this if you don't know, especially when you've invited a valued guest to the hotel. I can't believe that the president of the hotel, the face of the hotel, would say such a thing. That shows the depth of your character. No, no, no. Seriously. I didn't mean it that way. That's enough. Whatever your intentions, I cannot be friends with someone who disrespects my friends. I'm afraid a celebrity like you have someone has different tastes than mine. I'm sorry I am so poor, but who's out of place? I will never cross the grounds of this hotel again. Have a nice day. No, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wow, that's a lot of missed calls. Sorry, I was in a place with no signal for a while. I couldn't answer your call. What do you need from a poor lady? I thought you were in the middle of the celebrity mom's gathering. I deeply apologize for what I have done. You are the president of Greenwood's furniture. I had no idea. 
I didn't know until Miss Nicole told me. I'm really sorry for being so rude. No, no, no. It's my fault, too. I didn't know that a poor person like me shouldn't go to a luxury hotel. I'm sorry for the trouble I caused you. I misunderstood that you invited me. I'm sorry for my poor face. I'm sorry for being a cheap brand lover. I don't think I'm a match for Anna, a celebrity who doesn't know how hard it is to earn $3,000. I'll never talk to you again. No, um, I'm really sorry. Not at all. Sarah is not poor at all. If I look closely, you look so elegant. That's a word that comes out of knowing my title, isn't it? I know deep down you're thinking I look poor. That's not true. Well, I understand your hotel's opinion on this matter. From now on, I will never enter your hotel. I heard that it will lower the prestige of your hotel. Our company's gathering will be held at a different location from now on. I've already asked my secretary to cancel the reservations. What? No, please. Please continue to use our hotel. You're all welcome. I'm really sorry about what I did. No, you don't have to apologize anymore. We will also end our furniture sales contract. We will stop investing in you too. What? Investments? The first time I visited your hotel, I loved it so much. I had invested in it personally. About $50,000 a year. Really? Is that so? I didn't know that. You're a business owner, and you didn't know that? I have been relying on this hotel for both company benefits and product purchases. I did it as a gesture of thank you. But I can't go there anymore, so I'll stop. You don't need money from a poor lady either, do you? You won't be bothered if it stops, right? Nope, it's very troubling. If I lose such a big client and invest money at all once, I don't know what would my father-in-law say. Well, you deserve it. Even if I wasn't president and didn't have any investments, no one would admire your arrogance and disrespectful attitude. A business owner who talks about celebrity and the poor, you know? Judging and abusing people based on their looks is the lowest form of thinking for someone in the hospitality industry. I hope it's nothing more than being scolded, but it's none of my business. Please don't say that. Miss Nicole and the others went home angry too. Please, from now on, only you get half off. No, I'll give you an 80% discount. So please help us. No, thank you. I refuse. Please don't talk to me again. Goodbye. After that, Anna was blocked by all of her mom's friends, including me. Even within the kindergarten, her actions spread instantly, and everybody was talking behind her back. It also damaged the hotel's reputation, and her husband and in-law were furious. I heard she was told to get a divorce and gave a parental rights. Anna got impatient and tried to get forgiveness from me and the other mothers, but as expected, Everyone just ignored and she couldn't do anything about it. In the end, she was divorced, gave up her parental rights, and went back to her parents' house far away from there. I would like to have been friends with her if she weren't so strongly driven by a sense of superiority. I'm so disappointed. I received a polite apology from the hotel later. This incident was the sole decision of Anna, and the hotel was not involved in it. I accept the hotel's apology and will continue to use the hotel for my company and personal use. I hope that they also offer a discount, so I will let them reorganize my mom's group gathering next time. Sis, listen! Hey Jessica, what happened? It's really funny. I poured beer on a customer today. What? What are you doing? I was pissed off at the customer's attitude. Then the manager told me not to come back tomorrow. I lost my job. And so I'm unemployed from today. Well, it was just a boring part-time job. Really? I'm sure they would have fired you for that. But I couldn't help it. I was so pissed off. 
So you know, I'm moving in with you starting tomorrow. What do you mean by that? Why are you moving in my house? I haven't heard anything about that from my husband. Because I haven't told my brother anything yet. I know he'll tell me to go back to my parents' house because he's an annoying brother. That's why I'm telling my sister-in-law. I'm your sweet little sister now, so you will listen to me, right? But I have to check with my husband. And besides, why don't you just go back to your parents' house? I don't want to do that. What? Why not? Jessica, you were close to your parents, right? My parents are farmers. If I go back, they'll make me help them. And I won't be able to hang out with my friends in the countryside. I don't mind going back to that muddy place sometimes, but I don't want to live there again. City life suits me better. You know, I'm like a city girl, right? I'm skinny and cute. That's why the countryside doesn't suit me. That's your only reason? It wouldn't make much difference if there was just one more person in your house, right? I don't think so. I have a daughter in high school. I'm sure she'd reject it more than my husband. Micaela, right? Wow, she's in high school now? I met her when she was just a little girl. I know. So would you look elsewhere instead of my house? If you can't find anywhere else, you should contact your parents. And I don't care how pissed off you are at the customer's attitude. If you pour beer on them, of course, you'll get fired. You're responsible for your own actions. Why are you so cold? We're not related by blood, but you used to treat me like a real sister. Or have you forgotten the old times? I know, but it's not so easy situation. I have a family too. If you really don't have anywhere to go, I'll try to talk it over with my husband. I told you, I don't have anywhere to go. Actually, I tried contacting my parents, but they said no. Really? I don't think they'd say no. I think I've heard that farmers are always looking for people to help out because it's so hard work. Maybe you just haven't contacted her because you don't want to work for a farmer? What? So you don't believe me? That's terrible! It's not like that. But I'm already ready to live at your house. What? What do you mean? I'm at the front door of your house right now. So even if you say no, I'm going to move in, even if I have to force myself. You never had a veto right from the beginning, okay? <laughs> I just messaged you first as a courtesy. What the hell are you thinking? It's just until I find another job. I don't plan on staying that long. Okay, I'll explain it to my husband. Just make sure you find a job, okay? Thanks! Well then, I'm your new family member in the house now. My name is Sam. I'm a 42-year-old housewife. I live with my husband and my daughter who is in high school. And the person I was talking to earlier is my husband's sister, Jessica. She's 35 years old and she doesn't have a real job. It seems like she hasn't shaken off that student vibe as she hangs out with her friends every day. Even when her daughter was just born, she came to stay with us. At that time, we became good friends. Back then, she was still young and I thought it was normal to hang out like that every day. But now that she is 35 years old, this situation is too much to bear. You know, she had stayed over at our place before, and this time around, she pretty much invited herself to crash with us. So we're back to those days of being in her whirlwind, and we had no idea that she would do something like that to us. Where are you? It's almost 11 at night. When the hell are you coming back? Why are you talking like a mother? <laughs> I'm just chilling with my friends at the bar. I'll probably be home around 2 a.m. What are you doing at 35 years old? Besides, 
I can't have you coming home that late every day. I'm 35. That's why I'm not coming home late. I'm not a minor, so don't mess with me. If you want to show your motherly love, can you do it only for Michaela? <laughs> I'm not bothering you by coming home late, right? Yes, you are bothering me. I guess you don't know that because you've been drinking, but you always come home screaming. No way that's true! <laughs> Stop making things up! You just don't know it. My husband has to work early in the morning and he wakes up because of you. Moreover, Mikaela is in an important phase right now and she has things she needs to focus on. Oh, about Mikaela? She's graduating soon, right? She's such a snob these days. What? What do you mean? When I come home at night, I see the light on in your room. I go to talk to her, but I don't know if it's because she's wearing headphones, but she ignores me. What kind of daughter is that? I mean, ignoring someone older is just bad manners, right? I'm really surprised. Right now, Mikaela has something she's focusing on. She's probably immersed in her own world. In that situation, we're trying not to disturb her by avoiding unnecessary conversations. By focusing, you mean studying, right? Why don't you tell her that studying too much is a waste of time? I don't mind if you point that out. Just don't get involved with Mikaela for now. And if you come home late at night, I'll lock the door. What? Do I have curfew now? That's hilarious. <laughs> but it's no use, you know. I made a spare key for the house just in case something like this happens. I can't believe you did that. Making a spare key without permission? How could you do that? Well, it's my house, right? It's not your house. I mean, it's my house where I live now, okay? So, I'll be home when I want to be home. I won't let you complain. What position are you in to say such things? So today, I'm going to get wasted and then I'm going home in the morning. Hey, are you going out again today too? Yeah, I'm going to a concert today and I'm going to a party till morning. So see ya, sis. No, my husband warned you not to come home late, didn't he? Yeah, I think he said something like that. But when it comes to arguments, I'm stronger than my big brother. I don't really care what he says. If you come home late at night again, I'll ask you to leave this house. What? Why? What's wrong with you, suddenly kicking me out? What's wrong with you? That's my line. We agreed that it would just be until you found a new job, right? And now you're hanging out around every day? Are you even looking for a job? You're not going to stay at home without a job forever, are you? That's rude! I'm looking for a job! Really? Then did you go to even one job interview? I didn't go to any. I'm just trying to enjoy being unemployed for a little while now. What the hell is that? Where's the money coming from? You don't have any savings, do you? If it's about money, I don't have a problem. What? Why? I got $5,000 from your purse. <laughs> what? Why are you stealing people's money without permission? You're a thief. I can't believe it. Thief? You're overreacting. We're family. <laughs> Even if you're family, if you steal money without permission, you're a thief. That's why I had so little money in my wallet. Well, I need to have fun in my life. But you didn't have much money in your wallet. $5,000 is not enough for me. You're so poor. Then work and earn your own money. I'll work when I feel like it. But right now, I don't have to work to play. If you don't work anymore and continue to live at home, you will get a warning from my husband. My brother is weaker than me, so it's useless. 
I'm the strongest one in this house right now. If you want to warn me, you can do it as much as you want. Don't think you can control me with that. We're the homeowners, remember? So if I ask you to leave, you'll leave. I'm not leaving. I have a spare key. And if you kick me out, I'll just go back in. I'm still going to enjoy being unemployed. Hey, Sam. I'm going to drink with my friends until morning again. I want some soup when I get home, so please make it for me. Why don't you make it yourself? You're always cold, but I was able to raise money today too. Thanks for everything. <laughs> Where did you get the money? My wallet was hidden and nothing was taken from it. Oh, that's why I couldn't find it when I looked for it. But today, I changed my point of view. What do you mean? The J-E-W-E-L-R-Y. No way. Yup, I found it hidden on a shelf and sold it to a friend. And my friend paid me $5,000 for it. Bring it back to me right now. That jewelry is a treasure that Mikaela gave me on my birthday last month. I can't allow you to sell it without permission and use the money for your drinks. This is absolutely unacceptable. Give it back now. That's funny! <laughs> Don't get mad at me for just selling the jewelry that your daughter gave you. I know it's not a rare jewelry. It was only worth $5,000. What are you talking about? My daughter worked so hard to choose this gift for me. Give it back now. But I already sold it to my friend. Then get it back from your friend. But she's already gone. I can't ask her to return it now. But if you were wealthier, I wouldn't have to do things like this. What do you mean by that? Are you blaming me? Well, the house is falling apart. And there's hardly anything valuable here, you know. If you had something more expensive, I would have sold it. <laughs> like brand bags and brand wristwatches. We don't have anything like that. The only jewelry I found was only $5,000. I want to live a richer life. Is that something you, as a freeloader, should be saying? Why don't you experience the importance of earning your own money? Then, you won't be able to say such a thing. But I've already made money to spend for my night out today. If I can sell that piece of rock for $5,000, that's good enough for me, right? That jewelry, it's $100,000. Huh? $100,000? There's no way that's possible. I sold it for $5,000. That's because your friend clearly doesn't know the value of that jewelry. Wait a minute! That means I lost that much? Why would you even think like that? The jewelry was given to me as a gift in the first place, so you should get it back immediately. But why? There's no way Mikaela, a high school student, can afford such expensive jewelry. It's definitely not true that it's $100,000. Don't you know about her? You seem to be talking to Mikaela a few times, but I guess she never told you. She always ignored me when I tried to talk to her, so I didn't hear anything. And what's that? Mikaela is a famous YouTube singer. She doesn't show her face, but she has about 2 million subscribers. You're kidding! What's her name on YouTube? She goes by A-B-O. A-B-O? That famous anonymous singer? She's Mikaela? I always listen to her songs on YouTube. I'm glad you know her too, Jessica. Yeah, of course. She's so popular now that no one doesn't know her. But her voice is totally different. Do you mean the difference between her singing voice and her natural voice? She's doing YouTube without her friends finding out. So, she changes her voice a little when she talks on the internet. What? That sounds so professional. Well, of course. 
She earns money and she's a professional. I'm surprised you even know her YouTube channel. And she's even started her own brand. Wow! By the way, how much is her income? I guess it will be $300,000 a year. She just started eight months ago. What? She's that rich? Then why do you live in that shabby house? I thought you were a poor family. I would never have thought that there was such a big star in this family. My daughter suddenly became rich, but we are happy with the life we already have. We've never been that extravagant. I see. So, the jewelry Mikaela gave you? You said it was worth $100,000? Was that true? That's what I said, right? You'll return it, right? If you don't, I'll file a claim for damages, okay? I'm contacting my friend about it now, so please wait for me. But I didn't think she had that much money. Then, I don't have to work anymore. What? What are you talking about? It's enough money for me to live and go party every day. About $6,000 a month is enough for me. Mikaela is a kind kid, so I think she'll lend me some money. I don't think that's possible. Why not? It's not impossible. It's only natural that you would lend money to your precious family member, isn't it? Precious family member? Don't make me laugh. <laughs> What's so funny? Don't laugh. It's funny. She told us that she hates you a lot, so that is why she wouldn't lend you any money. Besides, I mentioned that Mikaela is currently focusing on something, right? Oh yeah, but what does that have to do with anything? She started writing a new song since the day you moved in. What? So what? She said she wrote the song while thinking about you whom she hates. I saw a little bit of the lyrics and I could feel how much she hates you. When I think about that song, it's pretty silly for you to talk about money and consider yourself an important family member. Why? Did I do something to Mikaela? You stay at my house like you own the place, and you disturb Mikaela late at night. You stole money without permission and did whatever you wanted. So yeah, you did a lot of things. She said just being in the same house with someone like you is irritating. Then why didn't you just tell me directly? She always ignores me when I talk to her. That's Mikaela's way of expressing herself. By the way, that new song is going to be uploaded on YouTube today, so why don't you check it out? I don't know if you will be mentally strong enough to handle it. I don't know if I'll have the mental capacity. But you can't talk bad about me like that. Wait a minute. Hmm? What's wrong? I just got a reply from my friend who sold the jewelry for $5,000. She told me she sold it at a pawn shop. What should I do? What? No way. But if you explain the situation to the pawn shop, they will give it back, right? She said she got $100,000 from that. I told her that that's my money, but she won't listen to me. I told them to give it back, but she said it was my fault for not knowing the value of that jewelry. Well, that is true. Then you will have to buy it back from the pawn shop. Go get it back before someone else buys it. How can I do that? I can't afford $100,000. I don't even have a job. Then why don't you work? No way. I still want to enjoy my unemployed life. But you have to start working tomorrow. What? What do you mean? I've talked it over with my husband, and he won't let you stay at home anymore. That's... That's terrible. Then how am I supposed to make a living from now on? Get out of my house and go to work. I don't want to work. I want to live as an unemployed for the rest of my life. Even so, I've already contacted them. Contacted who? Your parents. They will pick you up tomorrow morning, so you should go back home with them. Why are you being so selfish? I don't want to hear it from you, who's done whatever you wanted at our house all this time. 
I don't want to go to my parents' house. I'm fine working somewhere, but not with my parents. I'll get a part-time job somewhere in the city. I'm not going to let you work alone because I don't feel safe with someone who gets fired for pouring beer on customers when she gets a part-time job. It would be best to have my in-laws keep an eye on you, right? From tomorrow, you will be an asset as a farmer. Good luck with that. No, no, no! I still want to have fun with my life. I'm a city girl who has freedom. Working in the mud as a farmer is too miserable. I absolutely hate it. Don't mock your parents' business. You're too old to be playing around all the time. Besides, if you work on a farm, you get paid well. Use that money to pay me back the $100,000 for the jewelry. Then I won't have any money to go party with. Are you still thinking about that? I've explained everything to my in-laws, by the way. They said they'd give me the money as a salary, minus the money you have to pay back. Oh no! Okay, it was my fault until now. But Michaela, she's making a lot of money. Can we forget about the $100,000? What are you talking about? Of course it's impossible. Please, I'll work! I don't want to live with my parents. What are you talking about? You never even looked for a job before. You won't work unless you're forced into a corner. Work hard so you don't have to run away from your parents. And of course, don't forget to pay me back. It's terrible. They're coming to get you tomorrow. You can enjoy your last drink with your friends today. Oh, and don't even think about running away. Your parents said if you did, they'd come after you and get you. Then you'll have to live with even more strict surveillance and work. Goodbye. The next day, her parents came to pick up Jessica, and she was safely taken away. She is now working as a farmer under strict parents while crying. The $100,000 jewelry Mikaela gave me was never returned after all. So... She had to pay me back every month from her salary. She is always being watched by her parents, so even if she wants to run away, she can't. At first, she complained that she wanted to go to the city for night out. But after being severely scolded by her parents, she is now working quietly. After that, Michaela said she wanted to give something to me. She wrote a song to express her gratitude to me and sang it for me. It's a song that only I can hear and it will never be released to the world. I was very moved. And Michaela's new song became a big hit. It makes me laugh to think that Jessica is listening to it. Her family will continue to support Michaela's music career. I did it! Ron and I finally got married. A long-awaited moment. I am his wife now. Wow, you really got married. You're insane getting married to a guy who you stole from your best friend. You're frightening. I can't believe you won't even celebrate your best friend who just got married. I'm not going to invite you to my wedding if you are going to be so mean. You're unbelievable. You're even planning a wedding? How could you? When you stole a husband from your best friend? There is no law that says you can't have a wedding if you marry someone else's husband. What? I mean, it's pretty common nowadays. I see many celebrities do the same. It's a new form of love. I don't understand what you're blaming me for. How can you be so blasé about it? It's true love itself to overcome obstacles and get married. I'm not ashamed of it. It's rather something to be proud of. How can you be proud of your love when you hurt someone over it? And to top it off, you stole your best friend's husband. You both betrayed me and hurt me. How dare you say something like that? It wasn't intentional. I just happened to fall in love with my best friend's husband. The situation would have been different only if you had married him. What? Are you saying it's my fault? Oh, sorry. It's not your fault. I guess 
It's my fault for being prettier and more attractive than you. Huh? I'm really sorry I made your husband fall head over heels for me. Ron seems to have fallen in love with me more than I imagined. He says he wants to show everyone my beautiful dress at the wedding. So, we're planning to have a pretty big ceremony. A big wedding? How can you afford such a big wedding? You guys have no money saved up after you paid my alimony and property division. Oh, we're fine. After all, he's the eldest son of a famous family of doctors. I heard that the wedding gift alone will bring in tens of grand. That's enough for a wedding, isn't it? Well, I remember we ended up receiving about 80 grand with our wedding. I guess his friends are all well off and generous. That's a lot. If that's the case, I'm sure we will receive twice as much. I'm prettier than you and he's madly in love with me. I'm sure the guests will give us more congratulatory gifts saying that we are a better match than he was with his ex-wife. I doubt if it will go so well. We'll then put the extra money for our honeymoon. And when we come back, we'll build a gorgeous mansion. I can't stop smiling how my life is going to be a success. A honeymoon and a mansion? You are going to spend so much. It's nice, isn't it? Ron promised me. He said he will prepare everything for me. What? He is a son of a famous doctor indeed. He's planning to prepare any amount of money for me. That's how much he loves me. What? He's going to build me a house with a garden in the very prestigious area. I feel sorry for you that he left you. You know he can't get a loan. What? You should be sorry for your own brain. You're so carried away by his sweet talk that you're completely blind to the reality. You're beyond pathetic. In fact, you're hilarious. Wait, what did you say? What do you mean Ron can't get a loan? That means he can't build me his green mansion. Ron is bankrupt. That's why he can't get a loan from the bank. What? He's bankrupt? He used too many revolving payments with his credit card when he was in college. That's how his debt got so big that he had to file bankrupt. From revolving payments? He was very spoiled. No offense, but he's so naive. In the end, he couldn't pay it off by himself, so he cried asking his parents for help. But his parents didn't help him. They made him file bankruptcy, telling him that he had to learn his lesson. You're kidding. I didn't hear anything about that. Well, now you know. What? Don't be discouraged. Filing for bankruptcy doesn't mean the end of the world. You can always save up and buy a mansion with cash. How many years do you think it would take me to save up to buy a house? It doesn't matter if Ron is a doctor, there's no way we can save our cash to build a mansion. Well, you two should discuss that. It's none of my business. Screw you, bitch. How dare you say unnecessary things to Lynn. She wants a divorce because of you. What? What's wrong with telling her the truth? She was misunderstanding and I felt sorry for her. What the hell? You can no longer get a loan because of your credit history. That's why you can't build her a mansion. It's only a fact, and I feel sorry for Lynn, that you show her a dream that will never come true. Shut up! You have no say in this. I don't need a loan to build a house. I have rich parents. I cried and asked for help, then my parents said they'd buy me a house in cash. What? Your parents said that? That's right. I asked them expecting they would say no, but they said they'd get it for me. They said that it's going to be their wedding gift for me and Lynn. No way. 
Your parents are decent people with strict morals. They didn't even help you with your revolving credit. Sure, my parents are strict, but they are parents after all. In the end, they love their son very much. Life is easy when you have rich parents. Uh, I guess. Despite the fact that you're broke and you hurt your ex-wife's heart, you sound absolutely fine with everything. I almost panicked when I had to file a bankruptcy, but it was fine. Doctors don't get disbarred from bankruptcy, not like lawyers. Plus, my parents are rich, so I am invincible. You should feel sorry for yourself for getting dumped by someone nice like me. How dare you try to make me feel anxious? I heard his parents are going to get a big house for us. I heard that. Ron just told me about it. <laughs> when I heard about the bankruptcy, I was so nervous. But if I can get the mansion, I'm going to reconsider the divorce. I'm going to live happily with him as we planned. I really didn't expect his parents to go that far for you. But it's only natural, isn't it? Because I'm more beautiful and prettier than his ex-wife. I'm sure any parents would want to be nice to a wife like me. What? Ron just told me. His parents asked him what kind of house I want to live in. They were actually asking my preference. I'm sure they'll build me a mansion that fulfills all my wishes. What was it? A house with a huge yard in a prestigious area? And that's right. I prefer it to be close to the center of the city so that I can easily go shopping with his money. And a big yard is a must because I've always dreamed of having a big dog. I also wanted a luxurious atrium, a gorgeous kitchen, and a jacuzzi. All of those will be going to come true. You didn't ask his parents all of that, did you? A house like that will cost over a million dollars. That's more than you can afford for their lovely daughter-in-law. I'll be able to show them grandchildren eventually. In fact, they should get me a house worth a million dollars right away. What? His parents will get us a dream house, right? A mansion with a big yard in the prestigious neighborhood? Exactly the kind of house I deserve. You'll be living in a shabby apartment with no bathroom. You know that? What? That's exactly the kind of house you deserve after stealing your best friend's husband. Enjoy your marriage life in an old, tiny apartment. Hey, why are you acting so weird all of a sudden? That's not what his rich parents are getting us. Of course not. They even came asking me what kind of house I want. Did they say they would give you everything you wanted? They told me they'd get you a house exactly the opposite of what you asked for. What? Actually, Ron's parents contacted me just now. They said that they were going to prepare a house for his idiot son and his wife. They asked me where I live because they want to find an apartment further away from mine. It's really sweet of them to be so considerate of their son's ex-wife. What? So, I asked them a few questions. It seems that you guys are going to get a shitty apartment instead of a mansion. They said that it's good enough for a shameful couple. You're kidding. That's not true. Ron said he'd get me a huge mansion. He said it works if he goes crying and begging his parents. There's no way it's going to be a shabby apartment with no bath. You're completely mistaken. It seems that Ron did beg his parents, but I doubt that they actually told him that they will get him a mansion. What? As far as what Ron said, I don't think his parents said anything about a mansion. Well, it doesn't matter what they actually said. His son got a new wife. She's prettier than his ex-wife. It's only normal that the parents would prepare a nice big house for the new couple. There's no way they would get their son and his wife a tiny shabby apartment. I think they must be annoyed for being expected to do something normal by such a dishonest son and his wife. Huh? Many people congratulate his son for his marriage. 
Then he cheated on his wife with her best friend and got married. Why should his parents do anything nice for such a dishonest and unfaithful son? Unfaithful? We're together because of our true love. Plus, I think our situation is so cool. What's wrong with marrying after a dramatic love affair? You lack common sense and morals. His parents are getting you a shitty apartment, and in return, they are going to cut ties with you. They don't want anything more to do with the stupid couple. What? Cut ties? You mean with me too? I'm going to have them a grandson someday, and they're cutting off ties with us? Sounds like it. I don't think you can ever depend on your rich in-laws for the rest of your life. No. But you shouldn't be so depressed. No matter how much your parents-in-law hate you or how much you live in a shitty apartment, you have a husband now who is a doctor. As long as you're with him, you'll be able to crawl your way up again. I guess you're right. My husband is indeed a doctor. It doesn't hurt me even if his parents cut us off. He should be able to build a mansion for me eventually. Help me, Ashley. You still have my parents' number, right? Can you get in touch with them? Connect me with my parents, will you? What's wrong? What do you mean? I went to work this morning and they told me I'm fired. My dad, who is the director of the clinic, said that he doesn't need me anymore. He said he can't have an insolent person in a place where we handle people's lives. He really is a man with strict morals. And not only he applies to himself, but also to his son. How impressive. Exactly. And I lost my job because of that. I'm a doctor and now I'm unemployed. Plus the house my parents gave me is a shabby old apartment. I'm unemployed and living in a shack. I can't get worse than this. It's better than being homeless or disbarred. Stop whining to your ex-wife and go get a new job. I know that. But no one will hire me because my dad is connected to almost everyone in the medical industry around here. What? You mean all the hospitals in the city? I contacted all the big hospitals in the city and the ones in my neighborhood. But I get the same reaction the moment I disclose myself. They all refuse to hire me. Wow, your parents are really famous in the field. I had no idea your parents are so widely known. What's the point of having a medical license if I can't get a job? It doesn't mean a thing. That's true, but it's really none of my business, so goodbye. You have a wife to take care of. Good luck finding a job. What? Hold on a second. You're going to abandon me in this situation? Excuse me? I'm in a very difficult and pitiful situation right now, so hurry up and call my parents and talk to them for me. You can say something like, he's already sorry enough, so you should forgive him. You're going to have to convince them for me. You're so hopeless. I'll tell your parents. I'll tell them that you're not sorry at all. Keep up with what they are doing because it's really working. What? Don't you dare come weeping to your ex-wife. I don't care how much you're screwed or if you live in poverty. In fact, starting off very poor like that will be a better memory of the honeymoon period of your marriage. So, enjoy it with Lynn. No one told me that I'm going to be living so shabby like this. Please, Ashley, let me and Ron live in your house. Are you serious? I'm having a hard time because this apartment is much worse than I imagined. I'm allergic to dust mites, so my eyes itch, and my skin has horrible reactions from it. I have no choice but to move out. Then, why my place? I heard a rumor that you've moved into a nice apartment, with alimony and property division you received from me and Ron. I even heard that your place is huge. It's not huge, but... I do have plenty of space, and I also have a rooftop terrace. I placed lots of greens there, and it's like having a nice garden. Oh, I can't believe you're the only one who gets to live so well. 
We paid for the place, so it's practically our house. I think Ron and I have the right to live there, too. There's no such thing, and my place is already over capacity. Sorry, but I found this place because my boyfriend specifically wanted a bigger space. Now that we have completed our love nest, will you please stop interrupting? A love nest? You got a new boyfriend? Already? He's a wonderful guy. Good looking with beautiful blonde hair and a big heart. He's so kind and he supported me when I was really heartbroken. You've got such a nice boyfriend? And here I am with an unemployed husband. This is not fair. Thanks to him, I'm very happy every day now. In a way, I'm grateful to you, Lin. If you hadn't steal Ron from me, I wouldn't have met him. What? Not fair! I'm stuck here in this shitty apartment with an unemployed husband, and you're the only one living with a nice boyfriend in a huge apartment! Well, let's wish best for both of us. Take care! I'm sure some of you may have noticed. The good-looking blonde boyfriend I mentioned is actually my new dog. I just recently moved to a pet-friendly apartment with more space. Lynn still seems to have it all wrong. I hear that she's very depressed now, thinking that her life is much shittier than mine. As for my ex-husband Ron, I heard that he was finally hired by a private hospital at the far end of the outskirt. But his income was drastically reduced from the time when he was working at his parents' hospital. The hospital is taking advantage of him knowing that he has no other place to go. He's forced to do a lot of non-important chores and hard night shifts. He seems to be complaining and lamenting every day, saying that his parents are famous doctors. Thank you for watching! Please rate the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video!